I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. Oh, Uncle Phil. I I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was something that I... Hey, you know what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! I ain't need him then, and I don't need him now. <laughs> Will. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey. And I'm going to have me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that. Because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Whose phone is it? No. It's mine. It's my dad. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a Gary nice. move. Oh. Hey, dad. Hey, what's up? Tough. <laughs> uh, you caught up on my radio show right now. You're on the radio. Oh, I am. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Never been on the radio before. This is a big moment. I'll give you a yes. call. I'll give you a call after the show. Okay. Yeah, I'm driving driving home from Florida. So. Same. It's a big Philly accent. Hey, what's my middle name? James. <laughs> Dad, literally, my middle name is Michael. <laughs> I'm going to call you back after the show. <laughs> That's unreal. You're That's un unreal, <laughs> dude. What? Jeez. What the fuck is this? That made it up. That's the most Gary shit. Dude, it's the fact dude. that we're not called Sons I mean, of Gary. I mean, that was wonderful. He said it confidently. Dude, he <laughs> said <laughs> Jason James Okerson? What are you, a Jason fucking gunslinger? James? Why would I not be J.J. Okerson? I would have loved to be J.J. Okerson. Why does he not know your middle name? <laughs> That's Gary, man. He hopped on the bandwagon late. That's oh. Gary. <laughs> That's the Gary. That was fantastic. Because that was oh. as real as could be. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know my phone was oh, going. man. Guys, phone pull the Ouija going board on. out. I want to contact my Gary. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll explain things. Number one, both of People our dads... getting to know us. Both of our dads' names are Gary. Both had stepfathers named Joe. Both had stepdads. Oh, I still have one. Yeah, mine got booted to the curb when I was 16. He wasn't my stepdad either. He Trish was, and Terry, that's our moms. That's our moms. And, but what's crazy about that is we, that we almost called the show Sons of Gary, but we didn't think enough people would understand that. However, my dad, right when he got divorced <laughs> from my mom, was fucking a chick named Kathy who was a smoking hot flight attendant. Mm. Remember when flight attendants were like, uh, yeah. kind of like prized? Oh, yeah. Remember Jack Tripper and That's Larry would always go, they always bite their palms yeah. and be like, I got three <laughs> suitors. <laughs> <on." laughs> but my, my dad, uh, when he lived off Iliff and Parker in, in Aurora, he moved like down the street. He moved in with this chick named Kathy, who had a Rottweiler. <laughs> <laughs> and I would sleep. My dad would do this move where he, he didn't tell me they were fucking, but he would just be like, hey, you know what, buddy? Why don't you sleep on my bed? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like but where are you going to sleep? He's like, I'll sleep on the couch, dude. Don't worry about it. And then one night, I was like six. I just walk out, and no one's on the couch. And I'm like, did Dad leave? <laughs> and then I look in Kathy's room, and they're both laying on her water bed. And I'm like, oh, he's just blowing backs out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I, didn't I, I didn't live with my – I never spent time with my dad where he was, like, single – Oh, going on question, but it sounds like a fun time. I had my single mom for a while. I remember waking up one time, realizing my mom wasn't in the apartment, and then going to the window in the front of the house and seeing her outside in a robe, kissing a cop goodbye. Uh, oh, she was keeping our house safe. Yeah, I think, I, a got, I think a couple of cops came in, broke it down. Different civil service. Joe, my Joe was a mailman. Sick. Oh, I bet he had fucking sick calves. Greatest calves I've ever seen. <laughs> I bet, right? <laughs> they were like Rocky Three Arms. Oh, they dude, were all veiny. Dude, he was so vascular oh, right there. Oh, and they did the two lumps, the yeah. two lumps on both sides, oh. and then the tongue under. He's all right. Yeah, you got dope. Oh, my God. Jay's got crazy awesome calves. <laughs> it was great. Jacob was just sitting back like a kingpin. He's leaning back in his chair, and he just like on his head like, mm, yeah. But then look at mine. Good. Mine looked like I was healed in a tent, <laughs> and I just learned how to walk. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. right. It looks like you're walking on a treadmill while, yeah. while there's a person in scrubs standing next to you going, you're doing good. And my wife's standing there going, Dan, you're doing 
it. And I'm like, it's just so goddamn hard. Dan, this is your daughter, <sighs> Stacy. Remember her? Ah, I'm fighting to stand. <laughs> Uh, you were you have regarding Henry Cavs? <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, you're trying to get back uh, into society. So one night I I woke up and my mom's at the time Joe was supposed to be our roommate, <laughs> and I noticed his door was open and his bed was made. She pulled it. It's just my roommate. Yeah. I used to get a lot of they're my friends, and then this guy was just like, you know, smelling his own fingers on his way out the door, yeah. rubbing my hair with the other. Hey, kiddo, thanks for being cool for an hour. Yeah, hey, thanks for being such a deep sleeper. <laughs> I'll see you later, buddy. Yeah, dude, when I found that out, and I, like, looked, and he wasn't in the room, and I was like, I think it was, like, 11. And then the next day, I was like, hey, yeah, uh, Joe's sleeping in your room? And she's like, Joe, I wanted to tell you, Joe and I are dating. And you're like, but he lived there. Yeah, he lived there. He moved in as a roommate. Did he move in as a roommate? I or... don't think so. I mean, you never confirmed this with her. I was told he moved into a roommate. Don't put a pictures of Gianna Michaels while I'm talking about my mom getting dicked. <laughs> Is that what it was like? <laughs> <laughs> was your mom getting a dick down? Gianna Michaels for <laughs> But your mom talked a lot of ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. yeah. Those... Stuff it. Yeah. Stuff it in there. Put all the weight on those calves. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, put the mailman calves up. Start pile driving me. God deliver. God deliver. No, I used to probably carry her and do that. He used to do the against the door, hold her up in the air. <laughs> you get that underbang. <laughs> the cop or the postman. The postman. Oh yeah. But, but the postman wasn't uh roommate. Yeah, that was that was yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he had those calves just holding your mom in the air. Was your mom a small chick? No. Bigger chick. Not like fat, but yeah, bigger. Tall. Yeah. Broad, a broad, yeah. a broad woman. Yeah, deep voiced. My mom was tiny, with fucking huge, big Jewish titties. Really? Yeah. That's why the cops were just coming around. Probably, if I went back in time and thought, I, I didn't really remember having a bunch of friends say anything about it, but I bet it did because my mom was good looking and she yeah. and and, and th like just thin, like rail thin. <laughs> yeah, just like that, rail thin with big old titties. And I'm guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing she could take cock like that picture shows. Uh, it looks like she's drinking out of a Slurpee machine, yeah. but it's dick. It, <laughs> <laughs> like she's pouring icy into her mouth. Does that slushy have veins? <laughs> uh, you know what's funny is... I mean, she didn't, your mom didn't strike me as indiscriminately would just beat the shit out of you. I think it was she like, had something. I think I was being... Wrong. I think my mom... Uh, what I found out was that was the same month my mom filed for bankruptcy and was like worried we were losing the house and I was being like just a really like piece of shit little kid. And I remember because I was giving her like a lot of attitude. Like yeah. I didn't... At first I didn't want to get out of bed and she's like, get up out of bed, you got to go to school. And then it was like, I wouldn't eat my breakfast. It was like that kind of thing where it was building, building. And then finally I was like, well, if I just didn't... I used to have to go to after school program. And I was like, maybe I just won't go to after school program. My mom was like... And I, I said something. I remember I said something that sparked it because she was just like... <laughs> just fucking... Is what? it funny though, picking up like adult, like adult things in your life to you realize it goes, yeah. Like even as you're telling the story yeah. now, it sounds like, you, like you're like, no, 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 I probably had a good beaten coming that day i absolutely did i absolutely <laughs> yeah. did i like with my what my mom was going through i absolutely did and i was a piece of shit i i could be a piece of shit as a little kid because i was like fuck you and i think i pulled the i think the trigger and only kid dad I, like dad. I think the trigger line was well i'll go live with dad in san francisco I use that a lot. Well, I used to destroy my mom. I used to use Saying that a that lot. Like dad wouldn't yeah. buy my shit. Oh yeah. my god, your dad couldn't give two shits. About she couldn't say that. She couldn't said. say that. That's what my mom said. But, but you can't. Your mom. Oh, it's so like my mom. My mom. No, no, never mom, said that. No, yeah. my mom couldn't. My mom would be yeah. like, "Oh, okay. Well, let's see if your dad can provide you with." She would do that thing where she go, "Call him." That was the worst one. Where she's like, "Call him." Call you gotta get let down by him. He goes, "He's like, hey, Champa." But also, it's like this. I'd love to, but because that's two hours. It's an hour. Darlene's just moved in, and like it's an hour early dude it really was one of those things where my mom would always be like call him call your dad see if he wants to live with you if you want to go live with him in san francisco and i'd be like maybe i will <laughs> and, call, and, I, and it was that defeating thing because there's only landlines where you go he didn't pick up <laughs> maybe i'll call him i don't care i'm a deep voice eight year old you get his voicemail he goes hey if i'm not answering the phone Woo! it's because i'm out partying What's up? It's Gare Bear. I'm looking for a pot of honey. <laughs> Hold on, baby. I've never had my dick sick before on an answering machine. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, man. Man. I'll tell you what. You're right. He goes, I was a doubter, but no teeth is better. Ah. Anywho, after the beep, it just like, it hey, just happened. Yeah, do I do the beep again? 
Hey, what's up? It's Gary. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not in right now. I'm too uh, I'm uh, busy crushing bottles of rum and slamming puss. <laughs> Anyways, I live with my mom, so I'll probably stay at your house. So leave a message, and I'll get back to you. All right, Dad. <laughs> this is about my corduroy delivery. You know what's up. Yeah. Hey, what's up? All right, do it again. <laughs> Hey, it's the Prince OP, Gary Stoner. I'm not in right now. I'm out smashing poon. And this is my son. I love you, pal. Go Niners. <laughs> Dad? Mom really, uh, mom really let loose this morning. <laughs> she got loose on me. Mom really got loose on me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dad. Um, Mom led with a jab and an overhand right. Uh, it's almost like she choreographed the whole first round. Was, I'm uh, I'm trying to collect myself on a stool right now, but if you could teach me some bobbing methods. <laughs> if I can't live with you, can you at least teach me how to fight? Can you give me boxing classes if I can't come live with you in Nana? <laughs> that was the bar. Barcelona bar. That's where uh, my dad came out the one night and started just telling like crazy hey, stories. I hung out with his dad. You did? Uh, yeah. Jeez, it's your dad. <laughs> it's uh, he, yeah. was, he was the best. He had those crazy stories. Yeah. What was? Does the, he look it, like, like Jay? Uh, he d- he has gloves. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, he does wear knuckle gloves. He wears, and, uh, yeah, he has a beard, I guess. Yeah, he does uh, look like. I mean, he looks like like he's like a little smaller than you. Because I remember yeah. now, I was drinking like yeah a little bit. I was drinking. I mean, I was going hard. Like I haven't seen his dad in fifteen years. Whoa, like, Jay, come on, man, so we're brain. catching up. Give your dad a break. Uh, you know, like he's a good guy. Dude, I love that yeah. you, get, you get hammered and start inserting yourself into personal situations. Dude, 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 listen. I heard all the stuff you said about this guy, Jay, but I, I think like he's it. great. I think he's... I think you should give him another chance. Yeah. I'm not, he doesn't know I'm trying to give him another chance. Mr. I, Jay was ready to cut you out, and I was like, wait. <laughs> Wait, you want to do? You want to do another shot, Mister Big J? <laughs> Let's do a shot. Seriously, I don't have a dad, uh, Mister Big J, and I think you're a good one. I think you're our a good friend one. Giannis Papas was there, and man, he was just teeing off on some stories. He's like, yeah. me and your Uncle Tom split a hooker with the with the stove <laughs> open because there was no heat, so we had to fuck by the heat of the stove. Like, oh, my Christ. Yeah. What kind of Lewis and Clark tale of yeah. sex is that? <laughs> <laughs> we had to warm ourselves by a fire he as we gets pulled it. Tell you, so how did uh, you and Jay's mom break up? What <laughs> only, happened there? <laughs> only the friction of our genitals. Were the... <laughs> we scared away the bears that night <laughs> by our, <laughs> our screams of passion. Our smells and our yeah. hormones. Have you you, uh, you've, you've, talk, you've talked you've talked him like uh just saw him uh a week and a half ago when i did cleveland uh hilarity is that where he's at was he, he lives in ohio yeah. yeah he was yeah he came out he came out to a couple shows my stepmom came out my brothers who i don't know very well is that a weird, weird thing the stepmom thing what is that just like a weird thing, like a stepmom? Because I've never had a she stepmom. Just, I mean, like it's just what, what's her name? Diane. A, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, and Gary and Diane. And then, yes. But in also that Midwest accent, my dad's like, Diane says, "Oh, I actually had a great." Did I tell this? No, no my dad's story. So. I think this is so funny. Tales of Gary. We You'll love this. Them. This is a good tale of Gary. So when I did Fallon, I did the joke, oh. which I'll probably do on my special. So blur this <laughs> okay. out of your minds, everybody. <laughs> Just basically, a, it's a joke that comes down to saying, like, I got a small penis from my dad, and I know because I saw his dick when I was young. Yes, this yeah, is the I big, know, yeah. I know this bit, yeah. also known as the uh, Big Joe's, Joe's Big, Joe's big, big Dick. Joe's Big Dick, yes. Yeah. That's uh, why I put it down in my the, notes. The, the, the story that I tell goes into, it's a real thing. I saw his dick when I was a little kid. I was at his house. I went running uh, some, for the, his door because somebody tried to break into the house, like was trying to kick the front door. In the middle of the night, I went running for his uh, door. Terrifying. Terrified. I'm banging on his door. He opens the door naked, and I to make the whole joke that I saw he has a small dick, not without giving any punchlines. Why? Um, but so when I, I so I did it on the on Fallon, and he and he watched my Fallon, I guess, and he calls me. I just imagine. Hold on, I imagine him watching it like an OTB with everyone behind him, and as he do that, you know, and he just loses confidence, and he's like, ah, yeah, yeah, just goes make that proud smile, to like. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How am I gonna get out of here? Uh, this isn't my son. It's the wrong channel. Oh. Maybe he's on Conan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I screwed up. He's on Leno. Yeah. I think he's on Kimmel tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna turn this up. This is boring. It's stupid anyway. He sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Isn't that your kid? Yeah, man, but I, you know, he's not my thing. He's not my cup of tea. Yeah, that's why I left. This is why I left. You, you guys see why I left. I mean, it's like write a decent right? punchline and I'll stick around. You're going to hang out with a guy who says this kind of shit about you? Yeah. I know I'm probably putting the cart before the horse a little, yeah. but still. Do I think he's lashing out? Possibly. <laughs> so, <clears throat> just a real story. I don't know if I warned him. I may have. I may have just made a joke and said to him that I tell a story about you, or, or, or I may even said that it's a little. I, I have no like fear of talking to him like that. So I would say like, yeah, I got a story about your about your little dick. <laughs> but I don't even think I said that to him. I just did it or whatever. But what's so funny is so when uh oh so the next day after I did it actually when it was on TV that night when when it came out the next day my dad calls me he goes hey <laughs> I was like hey what's up I go did you like the thing he's like. Yeah, you did great. Diane didn't like you talking about my small penis. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's such a great, like, uh, uh, he's picked up the Ohio accent totally, yeah, even though he's like a Philly. Hell. Diane didn't like you talking about my small penis. So it turns out she doesn't like when you bring up my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so. He goes, if you're going to talk about my sausage, could uh, you at least get it a little yeah, bit bigger? I, I feel feel like uh, you didn't mean to do it. You know, it would be funny it. if uh, your dad had a real big one. Ah. That's funny. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hey, so. I don't mean to step on your toes here, but what if it's a joke? Your dad's real good at sex. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like what you're saying. I like where you went with it, but let's say, wouldn't it be just as hilarious if your dad had just a big old donkey dick? I mean, a just real knee knocking. <laughs> I mean, one that's uncomfortable for women. Oh, I mean, a turd hole burner. Hey, even, you know what? I'm not telling you how to do your job, but maybe write it where Diane can walk in the nail salon with her head a little high. <laughs> <laughs> Diane doesn't like you talking about my small penis. <laughs> it's my favorite, one of my favorite quotes in the world. Did you just laugh? So, like, so hard. Uh, so, <laughs> so what I saw on this weekend, my brothers, that's, again, weirder than my stepmother is that I have brothers who are like adults who I really just don't know that well. Stepbrothers? Then you go, hey, Half what's brothers. up, man? My, Half brothers. my dad and stepmom had two kids. Yeah, and you go, like, hey, what's up, dude? They look so much like me. It's very weird. You know how crazy weird. that is? You're like, hey, hey bro. Uh, hey, I'm your brother. Oh, did you guys just meet first time? We're brothers. It's weird. <laughs> dude, my dad's so hilariously ridiculous. When he came over years ago yeah. to see me in New York for the first time, I think he's only been like twice ever, but the first time he came, uh, he came over and, he, and like, I remember uh, Carla. Yeah. Uh, correcting him, she, he came over to the house first time. And he kept going like, "He's like, oh, he goes, you got to bring Isabella, our daughter. He's like, you got to bring Isabella out to Ohio. Everyone will be so excited for a girl in the family because everyone's got boys." He was like, uh, "He's like, this one's got Josie's got two boys, and yeah. Marie's got four boys. I have two boys." <laughs> like, and Carl was like. You have three boys. Like you're talking to the third one. This is what you're talking oh, about. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. You slipped my mind. Nailed it. Sorry yeah. about that. I forgot yeah. you're my kid, big guy. You know what? Going to stop by Rite Aid, pick up about 16 birthday cards I should have sent out. <laughs> so, uh... So, uh... Oh, shit, where was I? You're talking about no. uh, boys. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, so this particular trip... Uh, when I was in Cleveland, he came and did, he did the same thing to me. Literally, he goes, you know, your uncle Guy, which is great that I have an uncle Guy. I only had my dad's upstairs neighbor. Who guy, was guy, uncle Guy had up from Florida, of course. <laughs> uncle Guy has a like two daughters or something, mm -hmm. and he goes, Guy always calls me and says, Hey, you're real lucky. He goes, You only gotta uh, worry about two penises, but uh, I gotta worry about all the all of them in the world. Yeah. And he just sitting there goes. Are you just reminding me also that your your brothers also don't acknowledge me as your child? <laughs> like, hey. No one in your family acknowledges you have three children. Jay, funny story for you. Uh, <laughs> talking to my brother, he said, uh, "You ever you ever get a hold of that bastard in New York?" The one you we know, don't... you know, like you always hear a story of like uh, like someone like like some of your athletes, like their father won't be in their life, to, and they, and then once they get famous, everybody calls them. Yeah. Yours is the opposite. Once you get famous, your dad doesn't mention you at all. Like, <laughs> yeah. he does. It's the opposite. <laughs> I was like trying Jay. to get in touch with you. Like, you're, you're on TV. You would think he would be like, my one son's on TV and the radio. Like, no, he, he loves just that. Doesn't he loves that. Dude, what Dude what when I came say, down, when buddy? I came downstairs, you, go, you should listen to my buddy's uh, so, on yeah, the radio. In a weird way, I sort of feel like that's what it is. Like, he thinks I'm his buddy. But uh, this guy, I'm cool. Dude, when with. I came down, <laughs> yeah, yeah. dude, when I came down the, the elevator in the lobby of the hotel, dude, he was showing. There was this black dude who was like the concierge there. He was making him read the local newspaper article about me. He was making him read it. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah. And uh, and he's like, he's like, yeah, there he is, right there. He goes, Chase, get over here. This guy, and I was, I saw what he was doing. I was like, like I'm having him read your article. I'm like, ah, no, no, no. Yeah. he's like, ah, come on, get over. Here. And even like the garbing the article was kind of like. That's, that's okay. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. This is I yeah. didn't. I did not purposefully, <laughs> on purpose, did not pay attention to this guy yeah. for fifteen years to make him a great yeah. comedian. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it. I knew what I was doing. It was like doing two a days for fifteen years. Honestly, training. Remember him. in Conan where they pushed the wheel? It was like that, but emotionally. <laughs> Tell him the big. Your dad has a big penis joke. He just changed it like, on his own. Think about my big old hog. <laughs> anyway. He goes on Fallon and talks about how giant my cock is. I'm like, Jeez, I'm your dad. Talks about me yeah. just hanging sausage all over the house. Why, your people. <laughs> Diane's not even walking right. She can't even go to work. It's my, Diane. My it's wife has a completely different joke. No, <laughs> it's about it's my wife's so, hip surgery. This is great. So we're at the thing, and he goes to the first show, and my brother... My two brothers and a bunch of their friends came to the second show. By the way, I just imagine for some reason half of their face looking like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two guys. Like if you piece them together, but then they just have a generic face on the other side. I look like someone between a, a Michael Jackson's black and white video yeah. morph from yes, them to them. Exactly. Um, we look a lot alike. I mean, these these two more so than my uh, than my brother and sisters uh, with my mom. You know, mm -hmm. who I'm very close with. But they, uh, it was so funny. So they come and there's this big, like, kind of gaggle of people in between. So it's my dad. And one of my brother's friends says, he goes, Oh man, you didn't do, did you do the joke about your dad? Like the thing about your dad that you did on, uh, Fallon? <laughs> He was like, Oh yeah, that one. He goes, You know, uh, Jay called me. He goes, Jay's called me, uh, before he did that. And he goes, Hey, listen, dad, I'm going to tell this joke about you, but don't worry. It's just a joke. So I'm going to do it. And I just went, you're just making that up completely. Like, that never happened. <laughs> I go, why are you saying oh, that is just a front to back story? I'm just recounting a story of the yeah. time I saw your little bird. Really? <laughs> little yeah. bird. Like, why are you making up that I just said this to you? I've never, that's never a phone call that's ever happened. Did he go, ah, well, you know what? It's, it's been great fun. hanging out, man. I gotta, I gotta get go. out of here. I gotta leave for another 10. <laughs> <laughs> I got an appointment about my small penis. <laughs> Remember that jug that you said you were gonna change in your act? <laughs> Dad, I never said I was gonna yeah. change it. Nah. I just thought, hang on here, I wrote a few alternative well, lines for if you. you. If you don't want it to still not work like it's doing. Do it. People are murdering. He's, I don't think people like it. Yeah. People are standing up applauding. Do that joke that's... about your dad changed my life. It's, you know, it's just a joke, you know, by the way. <laughs> so he weird. called me. I have to wear sweatpants because my hog's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make these jeans in a 38 three-leg? <gasps> I hang real dong. Jay wrote a joke in the opposite because everyone knows, you know, you got you to gotta make fun of yourself. The and... guy likes busting my chaps. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Joey's happily. No, I mean another individual male, like, getting that excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> if my if my uh, if my daughter won a fight in a in an MMA ring, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like react that. that way if my dad came back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> you go, Dad. I go like this, dude. Get the fuck away from me. I'm get really? the fuck away from me. <laughs> I go like this. I go. If I get you a rum and coke, will you be cool? <laughs> <laughs> just, <Huh? laughs> yeah, I just don't. It's five o'clock somewhere. Just wasting away. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> seen my lost acre of salt? I like mine with lettuce and tomato. <laughs> Heinz 57, French fry potato. Dad, I got you a box of Marble Reds and a rum and coke. Good boy. Good boy. <coughs> Still got it. Call Cheryl. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Is, that. is that loose girl Janet still down at the fireside lounge? Is fat tit Carol still working at the bowling alley? Your mother's a bitch. <laughs> she still takes my money every month, so. Shit. I love you think that Gary paid child support. No, my mom had to garnish eventually. Me too.
Dude, yeah. I love that both Trish and Terry both went the garnish route. Yeah, the garnish. Did your mom bring it to you first, or did she just garnish? Dude, my mom my mom said it like she fucking whipped one on him. She goes, by the way, I'm garnishing your father's wages, is what she said. My mom said it to me, and I was so uh, spun around and just yeah. groomed that uh, I was like, no, don't do that. I go, he told me he has a very high furniture bill for all his new furniture. <laughs> yeah. My mom's like, we? All of our furniture has rips in it. Yeah. And I'm like, I know, but he's got nice he's stuff. He's a good really dude. Likes it. He's just cool. He's so much funnier than you. Dude, though, I mean, yeah, come on. He's fun. Dude, my dad <laughs> would own my mom when I was little because he would, yeah. whenever I'd visit him. Do fun shit. Dude, we just, we, after we were at Dan's Liquors, when we'd put in like probably once a week at least. I would spend six weeks out there. Once a week after our shift at Dan's Liquors. It wasn't your shift, Dan. I worked the shift. You I didn't opened work up. the shift. I worked the whole you shift. You go in the back and play with guys and hope uh, to no one see you look at the porn. I play with my guys on the side of the counter, in the mm. front, eating wow. Kit Kat, drinking Pepsis. You should be embarrassed. And then go in and play in the arcade for five bucks, which is pretty badass. It's pretty good. Everything, uh, everything it's just a quarter then? Or they're 50 cents at that point? Quarter. Okay. Street Fighter 2 just came out. Solid. And Mortal Kombat just came out. It was good fucking kid. great good, summer. You're a good kid. Um, you're a good kid. But then we, my dad would just take us to Toy World. Yeah. It was us. He would just take me <laughs> yeah. by myself. He would take himself also. Dude, my dad would buy. He bought starting lineups one time, and he was like, I was like, are those for you? And he's like, yeah. And I still got yeah, jealous. I was trying to hit on the girl with the cans over on aisle four. Always slinging it. Yeah. And when he lived in Denver still, we used to go to this bar called Caldonia's, which is. Why did you go there? Because my dad wanted to get hammered, and it was my weekend with him. You were a child. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't supposed to be in there. They had a video game. They had Castlevania. Wait, do you, think you think it that was for you? It was. It was for you. I mean, it was, there was a video game. Who else was there? Were there other children waiting to play the game? No. Nah, no, I, there wasn't, Dan. There wasn't, was there? Yeah, I got, you know why? Because it's not for children. I got to play it. Yeah, now that I think I feel about like your dad it. may have brought in that Castlevania game to occupy you so we can get hammered with his friends. Now, so you get twisted up and then fucking, like, hey, yeah, you son of a bitch. I swear to God. We would walk. First off, we'd walk. My dad's apartment complex. Of course, complex. you had DUIs. If, you, if, you're, if you're wondering, if you live in Denver, you know this is. My dad lived on the corner of Iliff and Parker. There's an apartment complex down there. And that's right where Caldonia's was in a gas station called the Barn Store. My dad and I would walk across the street. Dude, let me put Jimmy up into this. We would walk across the street to the barn store, which is like a gas station. He'd give me some candy for when we went home. And then we'd go to Caldonia's, and I would, I'd get to eat the candy playing video games. And my dad would just get hammered. Damn. Yeah, but my dad... Uh, Dude, just, you're oh, this. Uh, by the way, is there also bikini girls there, Dan? Uh, Your father's not a good guy to you, huh? Uh, no, go back a, to that original <laughs> thing. Go back. Dad. Uh, they, I mean, they did it at night. Is that Caldonia's right there? Is uh, that what's happening? Dan? I, I wish. I what didn't the see Christ? That. Dan. I, I didn't see that lady there. Of course you did. That's where your dad was while you were that playing Castlevania. That is, that's in the parking lot. I know that Yamaha store is still there. So that's definitely still. Yeah, dude, this is where my dad would take me. <laughs> and I, one, that's, it, that's it. Caldonia's. Dude, I want a Caldonia's We have shirt. smoking breasts is their sign. Yeah, yeah. Get the double fun. entendre. It closed. It got knocked down. It's not there anymore. It was a couple years ago. It got closed down. But they, uh, my dad and I were walking through the parking lot. This is a real. I was maybe six years old. We're walking through the parking lot. And, the sign uh, is a pig smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and it says we have smoking breath. Uh, Somebody went up and put in the words. We have smoking breath. R.I.P. Caldonia is gone, but not forgotten. I used to. Uh, we were so we're walking through the parking lot, and the car. I run in front of my dad, and a car stops. You know, and like honks, and I'm in the front. My dad's like, "Hey!" Like gets in front of me and puts his hand up. You know, then we like walk in. I go and play video games, and I come back, and my dad was drinking a beer with the dude that almost hit me. That's fucking hilarious. I and one of the girls God. from a bikini contest sitting on his lap? No, there wasn't. There Would you no, like no, this no. to be your new mom, Danny? I'm just that. fucking around. What, you need another dollar for the game? Here you go. That was really it, though. <laughs> that last part was pretty awful. <laughs> What do you need a dollar for the game? There you go. There you go, bud. I bothered Trish and Gary at a lot of bars. I'm going to get... So, that's fucking bizarre. They used to just bring you to a bunch of bars. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, you know... You were abused. <laughs> Wasn't abused. Damn. What? You're not supposed to be in a bar as a child. I'm sorry that I have an adult-like personality. <laughs> Because I grew up. In Is that what it was? <laughs> fucking cut the damping little kid. He's like, sing a song, you yeah. piano I man. Go, I go, George, you're over there. You haven't fucked her in five years. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to play Castlevania. Can I get another Shirley Temple? <laughs> God damn it, step on it. Gary, do a shot. We got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah.
Saturday night main events coming on. We gotta go home. I wanna watch Hogan versus Slaughter. Would he take you there to get day drunk or night yeah, drunk? Yeah, both. <laughs> both. <laughs> go both. But, dude, my dad checked out at forty eight of cirrhosis. Yeah. The motherfucker put in work. I mean it got it got He uh, also looked sixty. Yeah, my dad looked sixty when he was thirty. Really? Yeah, my dad always had a fucking he had a Garfunkel. Uh, yeah, he had like curly hair and a mustache. <laughs> yeah, he had a fucking good Brimley. When he nice was like, Wilford Brimley. When he was twenty four, he looked fifty. Really? Yeah. Just rough the whole time. No, it wasn't rough. He wasn't like a bad looking dude. He was no, just I'm not like, saying that. I'm just saying, but yeah, but if you looked that age, he looked like David Crosby. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he did. He looked like David Crosby. Crosby. He looked, uh, yeah, but we'd go to like, we'd go to Cal. David Do- Crosby also crushing pussy. Yeah, my, we'd go there. He lived with a lady dad. My dad looks a lot like <laughs> David Crosby. He looks a lot like Gary. Uh, we, my dad he really li- does. My dad lived with a flight attendant when he moved out of my. It's such a fucking. It's such a cliche. But my dad lived with this lady that worked for United. Hey, let, me give a, let me give her a Jack. Her name was Karen. Let me give a Jack Ritter a uh, hand bite when you say this. He goes, he goes, Dan. That's what my dad. Swedish stewardess. My, no, my dad did that to me when he picked <laughs> me up. He goes, Dan, I'm living with the United Airlines flight attendant. <laughs> I go, Where's, why do you and mom not sleep in the same bed? <laughs> this young me is going to be Ralph Wiggum. It tastes like burning. <laughs> Dad drinks because he's upset about mom. <laughs> yeah, dude, my dad, uh, I didn't realize. Taking you to the bar is crazy. Dude, both my parents took me to the bar. Is that you, mom, DJ Lou? My mom didn't take me to bars a lot. She's done it only a couple times. So, you know. The law got involved? No, no, no. Gary was like exclusively. He would take me to shifts when he was a bartender at a bowling alley. Well, here's the thing. But I go bowl. Bowl. Play. Yeah. There's things to do there. There's, there's an arcade there. usually. Yeah. There was an arcade. And there's, uh, you could eat Otis Spunkmeyer cookies. Love Otis Spunkmeyer Spunk cookies. Who doesn't, dude? God damn, Who I love Otis. Who doesn't? By the way, walking around these halls, there's an Otis Spunkmeyer oven in these halls. I'm huh? serious. These how what halls? Saw, and I don't know what's doing. It's, it's not cooked up or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Very I don't know. Are there other bar kids out there? 844 Comedy 9. If you went to a bar kid, if you were a bar kid, because it is weird. I don't. It's real I weird. Don't, I don't think. My mom's house was like, my mom, that was on very rare occasion. I'm saying like, I had a normal life with my mom. But Any occasion is pretty weird. But when I was with my dad, it was straight up lawlessness a lot of the time. Just my a mom, lot of the time. Like I had the joke on my stage. My mom was a kid. She never took me to a bar. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but I had that joke on stage about saying I'm 20% white trash because it really is like that's the specific amount that I've deduced it to. Where I yeah. was like, yeah, that was some trashy ass shit. But I, I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up like middle class with my mom. But then when I'd go to Lake County with my dad, it was fucking crazy. Yeah. It was just crazy. It was just a different life. Did it always smell like wood? It's beautiful up there. It's beautiful up there. It's just the people are – it's like being in a town of people of, of like – Mean looking dogs not on a leash. That's how I react. I was like, I can't, I can't let them smell you. <laughs> There's a lot of nice people in Lake County, but I'm saying like the people my dad was taking me around. Because at this point, he just deteriorated. I'm talking about Caledonia's. That's right after my parents got divorced. So my dad's not truly in the gutter yet. Right. When he moved to Lake County is when he went into the gutter. When, I'm talking backwoods, trailer parks. Like Caledonia's shit. is a pretty bad place to bring a kid. Cald- I swear to God. Probably just because I'm conditioned, but talking about Lake County versus the places I went in Lake County versus Caldonia's, Caldonia's is like awesome. Like going to the Hooters. Maybe. Yeah, it's like the best memories of me thinking about being at Caldonia's playing Castle. Like fucking the Double Deuce, <laughs> just fucking. No, I, it was always Lakeside. It was always the the bowling alley in Lakeport that uh, we would. That was a rough scene over there, though? That was not that bad. I saw some rough motherfuckers in that bar, though. I saw people where I was like, yo, that dude's life is... I was like 10. I was going to say, they all look like that when you're 10, dude. You When you're 10? It's... Late night bar people? But also, my dad was funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking Robin Williams you. I'm going to Goodwill Hunting you in this. Because yeah. you're not realizing it, and everyone else in the room is not saying it. What? That's insane that you were hanging out in bars at 10 years old that much. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot. It's bananas. Yeah. I had some of my best memories of oh, my Christ. dad growing well, up are hanging out in the garage. Yeah. Are hanging out in the garage because we would hang out in the garage. We would listen to music. We would like shoot BB guns That's and awesome. just now, Dan, chill out. Yeah. He was pretty much blackout drunk the whole time. Dan, do you so, see how stupid that sounds? That sounds pretty great. But it was great. Like, I that loved it. I, I loved my childhood. BB, BB guns sound awesome. <laughs> I get it. Trisha always made me do work. If I was at her house, she'd be like, hey, can you weed? We do weed on the side. Too. Weed on the side of the house. Christine and her dad were way better drinking. <laughs> they, they were, were awesome <laughs> to hang with. They were way better hang. Gary was a fun hang. 
yeah. could never tell my dad was drunk, ever. Trish doesn't have a good poker face. When I first performed at uh, Comedy Works when, in 2013, when they first headlined me, it was my mom's birthday. And my mom was so fucking hammered, and she doesn't she doesn't wear it well. She's you know she's a sweetheart. She's crazy embarrassed after that because like my aunt went out and got her drunk. Mm-hmm. But my dad, you couldn't tell he was hammered. You could not tell he was hammered at all. And the dude drank all day every day. You it's know, insane. I had friend adults, or I've I mean I have adult friends now. Yeah, I'd say that. Uh, some may say I have a drinking problem or whatever, or drink a lot or whatever it is that I because I, I see it in that. I've never felt the feeling of the people that were in charge of me being my dad just really didn't drink of all things. He smoked yeah. pop, but like it really wasn't in any way. It wasn't around me a ton. Yeah. It was around me. And I knew he was doing it, if it makes sense, but I didn't really know what his personality on weed was to tell you. My mom and step pop just didn't drink at all. You know what? It I came from a completely opposite end of where you came from. Of course, I remember being thirteen years old and everyone being passed out at the house except me because I'm thirteen. Right? That's insane. <laughs> yeah, like my mom and Joe. If you want to listen to this dimwit go? It's the best memory. <laughs> yeah. I but mean, my it's mom, horrible. my mom and her boyfriend, and my mom's, my mom and I listened. Thank God, because of therapy and me sure. stopping drinking. And uh, Trish is the shit. I Your love mom. my mom. But there were there was a real fucking dark time uh, when I was like twelve to sixteen, where my mom's boyfriend was toxic, and that was a toxic relationship they were in, and I was just around, and they were getting pint glasses of fucking screwdrivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. That's what he drank. She drank she drank Southern Comfort Manhattans, and I knew how to make them. When I was <laughs> fucking ten years old. Perfect. I knew how to make yeah. my mom a Southern Comfort yeah. Manhattan. It's a, memory, it's the like American a memory, dream. A memory of hanging out at Caldonia's with your dad, though. The fact of the matter, and I know you can say this too. Like my goddamn childhood is so fucking dark, and there's so mm-hmm. much bad shit in it that if I can't remember the good times of like hanging out and shooting a BB gun, there's literally nothing. I'm then serious. Also I'm the serious. When a gun want. was waved around the yeah. house because everybody was drunk, and but I want a Caldonia <laughs> shirt. Like I want to. I'm gonna find a Caldonia. I'm gonna, oh, yeah. I'm gonna have Bobby make one at Cast Digital because it's like, it, it just, uh, it's just a funny thing from my past. The, you know what I mean? When you grow up and you kind of look back and you're like, oh, it's funny. I'd rather celebrate that than be what bummed out by it. Yeah, be like that was horrible. My dad's a horrible person. It's like, wow, well, everybody's yeah. fucking. Like, oh, you got a bunch of calls, a bunch of bar children. Is it Gary? <laughs> Did he fake his death 21 years ago? God damn it. Man, I didn't know you were on the radio, bud. He goes, no, come on, man. I mean, you know, I liked your Comedy Central hour, your Netflix. I thought it was kind of a you know, step back. But, you know, this is not happening was great. In the bonfire. Before he walked in, I was just basically saying that, yeah, Joe. He uh, wanted to, well, the whole thing was building up to you were going to fight Joe. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, after he, he, like, so he visited, and then he started dating my mom. And then, I never went back. And, no, no, we came out to Connecticut and moved him. We drove him across the country. Dude, she involved you in that move? Yeah. And what was your dad saying about that? He didn't I say I wasn't anything. talking to him. You didn't talk to him at all? No, I mean, he was, he was gone. Just his best buddy, your godfather, Dude, what's just crazy swooped is, in. When my dad and I started talking again, Joe was living it with us. Do you understand how big of a jump in time that is? And your dad was kind of like, wait, say what? <laughs> yeah, dude. He was like, what's He's like, that? You know, your best friend, Joe. No, I was like, I was like Joe's, Joe's our roommate now. My dad was like, just leaves. Like, no, like, oh, all right. Like, I remember his reaction being like, no, oh, oh, all right. Well, my and he didn't out. talk to my mom. Like they didn't. They stopped talking when I was five. Wait, did he move in as a roommate? Yeah. So that was so that was the thing. He moved in as a quote unquote roommate. Oh. And then one night the guest door was open and I saw his bed was empty and I was like, man, these guys are fucking. Jeez, I had a very similar thing with my stepmom where I was just like, oh, good. You know, my my aunt's consoling my father on my mother's loss. And it's like, meanwhile, they were just fucking. Yeah. But uh, Christine was like, my dad stopped raping me. Is it me? <laughs> oh. oh. My dad never raped me. <laughs> <laughs> and Peggy's getting involved. My, uh, but what's with the part that I, the reason I was like, hated, like, got wanted to fight Joe is <laughs> he was, when my dad died, he was like, uh, kind of rude about it. Not like compassionate whatsoever. Really? Yeah, like my dad died of cirrhosis, which is a fucking brutal way to go. And then Joe was just kind of like, uh, my dad died. And like a week after my dad died, Joe was like, hey, sorry about your dad. But like in passing. And you're like, fuck you. Jesus. Like, fuck you. I haven't beaten up your mom's liver pretty good, too. Yeah, he, goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I don't know if it hits her liver or her kidneys, but it's all like, Rata. either way, Rata, you, you know, you're. I'm definitely fucking up some organs. He goes, Blah. Oh. Blah. 
He goes, you know that because you're downstairs watching wrestling right under my fucking ring. <laughs> you're watching your wrestling ring right under my wrestling ring. But then uh, let me remind you who pays the cable bill here. Your mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, let me tell you who's blowing her back out. He would always, Good old Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he would always talk shit to me, and I was just small. And then I finally got big, and like there was a couple times he like flex, like he like flexed on me when I was like 14 or 15, and I was small. I was smaller, smaller than him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah, I don't want to. And he's got he had man strength. Yeah. And then at 16, I fucking shot up and got big, and I was like, what's up? And then my mom's like, I'm taking Joe out. And I'm like, cool, but also, <laughs> fuck, ah, I was ready. <laughs> she said, I'm kicking him out. Yeah, no, she kicked him out. She's like, get the fuck out. And then he one went, day. Uh, it was like a week process. Oh, just like a just with a, a knapsack full of speedos. No, he moved in to Linda, my mom's best friend's house. And now yeah, they're, they're together. together. He was just swim caps and he's speedos. Great. And swim caps and speedos Joe's and goggles. Great. He goes, All right, I'll just swing dick over to another friend of the family. <laughs> he really did smoke too. He smoked Marlboro Reds. Of he's course. Like, he's like, All right, what, what's Linda up to? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but then like the bittersweet part was he moved out. Uh, the day my sister got killed. So it was like bittersweet. Ooh. Jesus. So like the day my sister died, Joe was leaving. So I'm like, yeah, no. It was a, it's your sister, sister, your mom's daughter? Da it's my dad's first daughter. from dad's his first, first one. Yeah, my half sister. Do you know her mom? Yeah. Yeah, she still lives out in LA. So. You ever see her? Uh, no, I should see her. She has a half brother that's also my exact age from her mom's side. My sister did. Oh, weird. And his name's Don. Don? Dude, I swear Don to God, this is a Dan. real thing. That's what, I promise you it's a real thing. Don? Donald. He's got a family. He lives Donald in San Diego. Donald. He's like a normal guy. He's Donald. like a 34-year-old. It's like, it's weird. He's like a... Uh... Donald Danald. What was just... Danald. Dan Dandel. I wish your name was Danald. Danald. Can we just change your name to Yeah, Danald? I'm probably being Danald Soder. <laughs> I love it. That's really tickling yeah. me. Yeah, Danald Soder. Hi, I'm Danald Soder. Hi, Danald Soder. Real TV estate agent. Hi. Hi. From Remax. I'm Danald Soder. <laughs> Century 20. Ones. But Damn her mom so. had her brother Don in July of 1983, <laughs> and my mom had me mom in June had of 83. Don, Don yeah. had Dan, Dan, Don. <laughs> you know what it sounds like? Chris One Dish. of those old uh, Joe. Like Don, uh, Dan, uh, Dan, uh, Don, 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 but I got bigger. <laughs> oh, they love that's what, what's the hot rod, hot rod style. Love, total hot rod style. I love you training like in your room, just on double fist, like dragon punch. No, it's funny. You're like, oh hey Joe, what's up? Oh no, I'm not gonna be able to make it to your meet. Looks like you're not gonna be able to make it either. Dragon punch. Ah, oh cool, yeah. No, I heard you're pretty fast on water. Too bad you're on land. <laughs> well, guess what? Land shark just pulled up. I <laughs> know oh, you're pretty slippery. Too bad you're dealing with land and air. <laughs> <laughs> I am the other two elements. <laughs> um, but I like I got big because uh, I played football and I was like lifting weights and shit. And I did you get big or did did like a grandmother tell you? Oh, oh you so 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 Yeah, grandma, you think like big enough to like fuck up Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Ma, hey, Nana, you know how big Joe is. What do you think? I fuck him up. She Eighteen goes, or sixteen? I, I'm man, still gonna send that. She goes, oh, bro, it's not that. He goes, she does have good cardio from all the swimming. <laughs> I'd steer clear. I think he's gonna best bust your ass she wide goes, open. If it goes into the later rounds, you could be in trouble. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh baby, something. Grandma loves you so much. I don't want to see you get your face buried. <laughs> oh, let me kiss that point one more time before uh, Joe puts his fist right through. That. <laughs> awesome. He's got, he's got his back is basically like a Vander Holyfield up his hand right to the back of your head. It's <laughs> he gonna be like getting hit with a single block swing from a mile away. <laughs> oh my god, he's, he's built like a brick shit house. You died. <laughs> <laughs> he defeated your mother with dick. Now he's going to defeat you with fists. I didn't know. You saw him. He swam anchor. You're in trouble. <laughs> he swam anchor. My parents were mid thirties, and they were they were alcoholic thirties, yeah. which you know is best kind. Let Rosy cheeks. Yeah, man. When you're when you're everyone's out, blotchy in that fuck sesh. There's a picture of me and my dad where I'm in a diaper and I'm on his legs, and there's just a pack of Marlboro Reds right behind me, and I was like, yeah, dude. That's right. I'm lucky if they were going outside to smoke. Oh. No way. No way. Right over you, dude. Right over. Ash, I bet cigarette hanging out of the mouth while oh. change your diaper. A little ash drops on your chest. Uh, ee, ee. He goes, oh, yeah, toughen up, pal. He fucking rubs it in and starts anointing you like the, what's oh, the, what's the, the dude uh, with the coconut? Yeah. In fucking the <laughs> Lion King. There it was.
Man, that would have been funnier 30 seconds ago. I thought you were going to do an Ash Wednesday. It's fine. That would have made more sense, too. I couldn't yeah. think of that word. Yeah, so anyway. Do you remember what? Dad banged mom against the wall, cops came, and whatever. Did the cops whatever. really I come? I never think about it. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, cops walked my dad out. What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I got mine... My I got my and parent. my dad did like the hey champ because I have to go away no! for a while. Yeah. Oh my god, dude, that's traumatic as fuck. And he drove like my right mom, away to Florida. My mom got the divorce call like when they got Obama, or not Obama, uh, when they got Bin Laden. Like she just picked up the call and she's like, "It's done, it's done." <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a mob hit happened. Yeah, that's the right way. It's to over. Do it. I don't know my mom and dad's divorce thing actually, but he took he went like right to Florida for a while. Florida. Yeah, went off the floor. That's where you go. Shout out Gary for sticking around uh, across the street from Caledonia's for a no. couple for a couple months, and then hightailed to San Francisco. Dude, dad was outski and under a year. Florida too. What a divorced dad place to go. But then linked up with a chick in PA, like where where like Vecchione Owen worked. When really he was younger and stuff. Yeah, like the Fallcroft area. So he went. That was my stepmom and her three sons uh, that you liked. My, yeah, my stepmom I liked a lot. Yeah. You got along with her very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's weird to go from Florida back to PA. Well, his family all went to Florida. Okay. And he, he knew people young. in PA. Yeah, when he was like a teenager, they all moved to Florida. He stayed in Philly. Got it. He stayed with his step family. Okay. You know what it was? My, his mother. Yeah. My paternal grandmother. Sure. Split up from my Uncle Tommy. Yeah. And, you know, his, that's his mother. Uh, that's the his, album shot that we put out of the Okerson boys. Yeah, it was their dad. Or something, what it was, and my dad's mom, and then they, my dad's mom, like left him. And, he stayed in Philly, and they all went down to Florida. And my dad stayed in Philly, though. Stayed in Philly with. So all of his family was down in Florida. Then. Sure. So that's when they're just, they really, that's why I'd go to Florida on the summer's time. I mean, real, like, let's go fishing gator people. Yeah. Like, it was, they knew, how to, they knew how to gut their own fish and shit. Oh, I watched Jay a guy. coming on down here from Philadelphia. I remember they sent me with a guy who was just like a roommate. Yeah. My uncle Vinny. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace. All right, P. Vinny. He uh, he he goes go with this guy fishing down by like just like a watering hole almost. Like it was so awful. What a layup for a molestation. I mean, a layup, dude. And this guy yeah, had, well, and he looked you the ever part. had your pickle sucked in the tall grass. He looked the part, dude. He had like a gym coach hair. He had a ball in the middle. He had Picard hair. Ah, uh, trust. I'm gonna ball young Jason and return him a man. He had the he had the bald on top, you know, Picard hair with Great. like but like dark. Mustache, yeah, uh, we, a, like really good tan body, but like all right, hairy. Okay, you know what I'm saying like you know like he's a like muscular, tom, like a Magnum TA body from old NWA. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you look like a young Burt Reynolds. Okay, and uh, took me out uh, fishing. And Just he, you two. Yeah, he caught a bass. Then we took it to a place, and they waited. I just remember the smell of everything. Just that awful fish smell. Yeah, and then. Uh, they asked him, I remember, if they wanted if they wanted them to clean it. He said no, and we went back to. Did he teach the you apartment. a life? Did he teach you a life lesson while he gutted the fish? Did he go? Now some men, they uh, they won't tell you to your face what what you want to hear. <laughs> Just slicing it. No, he did. But some thing. people are lie to you, Jason, and those are the people you gut like this fish. He's popping the guts out. He could see me be a real. He could see me being like a real like city ninny about it. Yeah, and so I think he was reveling very much in like he was like now nah, with well, if you do it right, if you poke right, he, and he just that thing just cuts a little part of the fish and like everything falls yeah. out, and then he digs his hand in like yes. extra like pulling out the blood and the guts and everything and. I think he was like, this is what we're going to have for dinner. I'm like, that's what you're going to have for dinner, maybe, dude. I'm but there's gonna... not a fucking chance I'm eating that. I've just seen this go. thing's face. Hi, Jason Okerson. You are familiar with my temper tantrums. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get McDonald's. Yeah. I'll eat bur- Oh, yeah. A temper- <laughs> not a temper tantrum. A full-blown hissy fit is more the way to put it. <laughs> temper tantrum would imply more masculinity into it. But this is this is the personality of... A full-blown hissy fit. I had a hissy fit when we... Uh, we uh, my dad's girlfriend, Janine, the one yeah. that gave him... Uh, it was Jeanette or Janine, I I always forget the one that killed him she got the fucking death star shot on him with the head suit <laughs> but when we ate late i gave a hissy fit oh yeah because i wanted to eat and it was like 11 and i was like when are we gonna eat <laughs> 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 like, no like, masculine and by none. the way you like, don't even realize in hindsight like these really- <laughs> are the reasons why our fathers were deadbeats because yeah. they hung out with a few times and they go this kid fucking sucks, sucks dude what a little bitch because i left his mom because she sounded like that yeah I do you. I get scared if the temperature's not this in here. Do my dad doing an impression of me while smoking and pouring two drinks for him and his drunk roommate Jimmy? He goes. Then the kid's like, "I want to play with 
my guys. It's like, God, no wonder I fucking did it go. What a bitch. When he got my first stepmother, you know, he moved into a situation where the kids were like young teens almost. Or, right. or teenagers. Hot. Hot action. Yeah. And all boys. Two twin boys <laughs> oh, and a third. Roman gods. It wasn't even that. They were just dudes, though. So, yeah. like, they already, I think, cared about, like, the Eagles. Sure. Do you know what I mean? They, he came in on a guy level. He came in ish. relating to Definitely more than I was. I was yeah. a little kid. And I'm telling you, when I hung out with him, he pro- how much I probably, in his world, was like, oh, my God, this kid's a sissy. You know, I'm very afraid of the dark, afraid of- uh, <laughs> That's a great one to lead with. Uh, sleeping. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Terrified. Does- Weather. Weather? Bad yeah. weather would Did- fucking wig me hard. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> really? Disneyland? Ruin a Disneyland trip for him and his family. <laughs> <laughs> From rain, I never it rained. You, dude, did you? Did you need like a thunder vest, like a dog? Yeah, dude. yeah. Jacob, 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 Jacob. Dude, no, you're not a good dog, guard dog. You're not you're supposed a good to guard say dog. whoever opens the door to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, you're a bad guard dog. Damn it, dude. Bad Jacob. Jacob, bad. Yeah, we went Dude, to. Uh, so, I hold on back to you, being scared I'm gonna tell of boom you. booms. I'm gonna tell you, we go to Disney World. <laughs> All right, my dad. I mean, that's that's the big one. Listen, I'll tell you this: he definitely didn't want to take me to Disney World, <laughs> but he took me. He saw this coming. I mean, he's probably right. <laughs> So wait, your dad was like put out knowing that he was like, I got to take this fucking kid. I got to take yeah. him out on yeah. a trip. Yeah. Oh. Unathletic little turd. Oh, no, man. Come on. You're I, right I look like it. Peter from fucking Cosby Show. Yeah. Just sweats in a tight sweatshirt. Oh, buddy. A bowl haircut. Oh, buddy. And then so we go, uh, <laughs> we go to Disney World. Sure. And that's the world, right? In yeah, Florida? yeah, Orlando. Yeah, world's California's land. I've been to land, haven't been to world. So we go in. By the way, side note: Trish was stuck on "It's a Small World" after all uh-huh. for six hours in the seventies <laughs> while they just played it. So she got Abu Ghraib. So oh Abu, my God. she got Git mode. She went native. So if you ever play "It's a Small," my mom will uh, fight whoever's in the room to play. She's it. In if a she very comes, bad mood. if she comes on the show next Thursday, play this and watch my mom fucking. She just climbs starts, over to get Lou. <laughs> <laughs> taking cuts. Like, my mom will be like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Dude, my mom, it's like, weep, it's like, weep, it's like, weep. what's the kill bill? Everything turns black and white. <laughs> weep, weep, Dude, it's weep. like that movie with Jet Li where his collar comes off. Unleashed. He, yeah, to my church is unleashed. <laughs> it's fucking, it's a small world. <laughs> Pavlov. Dude, she'll fucking, she'll go, my mind. So I'm losing my mind. Yeah, so. You'll get fucking punched in the fucking holy face. Yeah, yeah. holy energy up with a holy energy punch so you go to florida so with gary and the in the new fam and the new fam my stepmother who i love and my <laughs> three step at very least the two twin step brothers and they were cool yeah we go uh man that's got to be a good feeling to have step brothers that are like hey man we're older what's up what's your name and you're like, Jason. Oh, they fucked with me a little bit for sure. But overall, I thought they were super but cool. But they weren't like Fat Tit Neil, who was like, Dan said he smoked his cigarette. And I'm like, I did, Neil. No, no, no. Shut no. up. No, 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 no. And they didn't really like, like fuck with me too, too much. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. it was just like, I'm sure I annoyed them. I was uh, much younger than them. Yeah. So like, uh, but overall, though, they were fun. They were good. Josh, Chris, and Jay. Uh, hey. The oldest one was Jay. Josh and Chris were the twins. And Jay was the older one. What went did you go, go by? Went to go live with the father at one point. In Florida, I think, but the father was a real, the kid's biological dad yeah. was like a cowboy hat with a turquoise jewel in the middle, like Love belt it. buckle guy, like Love real. It. Six pack. <laughs> Jacob was like, yeah. I bet that guy had a six pack. No, no, not Damn that it. kind. No, more like- uh, I, thought, I was thinking Brad Pitt. No, more movies. like out back of his house, he might have like a barrel connected to four bungee cords that he like tries to ride. Like, <gasps> yeah, it might, maybe something like that guy, more guy. I like this guy the more you're describing him. I, he didn't have that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I would have wanted to live with him too if he did. <laughs> I mean, my stepmother still hates me to this day because of all that shit my dad threw me under the bus with. You know, my dad, I told, have I told these stories in here before? No. What my dad did? These are great. So my father, Gary, Gear, sons of Gary. This is great. When I was a kid, um, I went to visit him in the summertime one time, and I brought uh, a porno movie. What, what was it called? I don't remember. Okay. But I brought it. My mom knew I brought it. She, cause she caught me with it and then was like, I'm taking this away. And then I snagged it before I left to bring it to my dad's for nice. a couple of weeks in the summer. How old were you? 
<clears throat> my dad moved when I was 11, so it's called this 13, 14. Oh, perfect porn time. That's yeah. when you start. I was real big into Shannon Tweed until I was about 13 and realized that they were doing it for real on tape. Maybe I was 15, and I want to say, it'll, it'll come back in the story later as to why that possibly is. Um, I apologize to everybody for my sniffling and shit, too. This allergies and weather is murdering me. You have very bad allergies. But it's go back. killing me. Oh, these allergies. So uh, I go to visit my dad with this porn. My mom says, I think our son's there with a porn tape, just so you know. FYI, I think he's loaded. I think he brought something with him. I think he brought some of the merchandise. My dad gives me a... Uh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. This was younger. This was probably about like 12 or 13. This all happened in like a succession of years. We'll say 13 years old. I bring this porn tape. My dad goes, look, I don't care. It's fine. You have it. I get it. But like, when you leave, don't bring it home with you. So I'm going to tell your mom I took it from you. But just, you know. So your dad was cool with it. But he goes, he's cool with it because he wants me. He wants it. Yeah. He wants the tape. He wants. So like, when I'm leaving, I'm like, did he right. look at it? He goes, I'm good like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, Dad, I'll throw it out now at the end of the trip. And he goes, no, 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 hang on, let's not get crazy. I but, don't think, dude, we can kick these tires. Like, Just leave it. Now I would stay in a room in like there. They had a finished basement before it sounds like I'm being tortured. So yeah. I stayed there. So you stayed in the basement. And you had a, you had a beat. Room. You had a, had a VCR room. and a little TV in there. So yeah. you basically had a relax room like we talked about. A oh, beat yeah. room. Total I'm gonna beat build room. Them, I'm gonna build in my grandma's. Beat laboratory. <laughs> my beat laboratory. So, <laughs> Mom, uh, what's your step? What's your step? Diane. Diane. Gare, I'll be in the beat lab. I'll be in the beat lab. Everybody needs me. I'll be beaten. I'll be cooking up some beats. So he goes, leave. Just leave the tape. I was like, I'll throw it out. And he goes, no, no, leave. Just leave it here. So I'm like, okay. But when did they, he talk to you like a dude? Like like two dudes? Because that sounds like you guys were talking like... Well, these are the three. Actually, I, I, I'm going to go back. This is the middle one I'm telling you right now. I'm going to have to go back a little earlier on the next one. But in the... Uh, with the porn thing, I leave. And my stepmother, when they're moving to a new house, eventually, and they're cleaning up the thing, they find the porn tape. My dad just would be so afraid of my stepmom, dude. He just throws me right into the bus. Like, he told me to leave it. And he would call me with her on the line. Like, like she would make him call me to, like, reprimand me. A guy who talked to me twice a year on his own accord. That's so great. Do you know what I mean? Like, twice there's, a year on his own dude, accord, he would call. There's nothing bad than absentee father uh, discipline, where you're like, where did you get the jurisdiction? Oh, dude, my favorite was when he told me. My favorite was when I went to his house and he told me I'm not allowed to watch Married with Children because he doesn't like the way they uh, perceive the father. Oh, jeez. I'm like, what? Oh, you mean that he's around? He's yeah, around? what a real bummer. Even he's there every day. Even reluctantly, he sleeps in the home with his family every night? Dude, that's what I loved about my dad. My dad was just straight up like, dude, I know the score. I ain't doing some real parenting. Who wants to go to the toy store? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. This guy gets it! Yeah. <laughs> Word up, Gare. Yeah, Gare, you're the best. He's like, listen, if I'm going to make you go work at a, at a fucking liquor store at the age of fucking eight <laughs> years old, I might as well take you to the toy store after. So my... Yeah. Uh, so my dad, uh, he calls me with Diane on the phone and runs me down about leaving this point and disrespectful just to bring it to his house and everything. And I start going like, Dad, you told me. And he would always like, cut me off. He'd be like, ah, bah, 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 it's enough. But Dad, but you told me. Literally, he would cut me off and then go. And then when my, and when my stepmother would hang up, he'd call me back. Hey, sorry about that, Dad. He'd, literally, he'd go, he'd go, hey, bud. He's like, sorry. He goes, just like, I got to live with her, man. And it's like, she just, <laughs> she rains it down on me. You know how it is. It just sucks. Diane doesn't like it when you bring beat material. <laughs> when you bring beat material to the laboratory. <laughs> hey, Diane doesn't like you cross contaminating our beat lab with any outside <laughs> sources. <laughs> So before a couple years before that, my uh, I guess my stepmother's nephews, so my cousins, I guess technically yeah. step cousins, my step cousins, yeah, they were one of those like fucking postcard families, yeah, yeah, you know I, mean? like I call they, yeah, yeah, wallet families. They, they all was perfect. They all have the same fucking sweater on, and then all their names start with the same letter. Where they're like, that is Christopher, that's Cody, and that's Campbell. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was it's even more. It's like. It's like Mark, Stephen, David, and Gregory. And it's like literally their names. They were all baptized by the same priest. Of course. We go there every Sunday, and we love them. The dad, Diane. The parents are Marie and Jim. Diane is my sister, and I I love her. So I want to make sure that her stepson loves her as well. The dad was a stern like man who just like but like you know believed in marijuana is a real drug. Yes. It's a real problem. Absolutely. So these climate kids, change isn't real. So what we do. Of course, it's Christmas time. I'm visiting my dad. And when it comes time, like, you know, they're like, what did you, uh, like, I'm like, I'm like, do you guys know what I got? 
I asked them, and they go, yeah, you know, whatever. By the way, it was like bullshit. It was like, yeah, you got some slacks, which is great. <laughs> Things that make them happy. I think you got a sweater, the same oh, sweater the whole time. You, but your year. dad, Deb looks so fucking good today. Good Lord, you are a, wow. How are, she's the hottest girl at Sirius. She Sorry, looks, Christine. Sorry, Christine. I think you are. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> just look. Just look at her. She's so hot. She never looks over. You can just. I don't care. I'm going to keep waving at her. Hi. 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 <laughs> um, all right. Back to. So. Murph face, do me a favor. Drop your pants and jump up and smack ass against the window. <laughs> smack dong against the window. Just do me a favor. Just press ham. Do a jump to a flying press ham. Or uh, like it, like in one of the movies when animals go crazy and they just start slamming their heads into the wall. Um, so Diane's nephews. Diane's are, nephews. Are, we're, we're doing the. Do you know what I got for Christmas? You got too? such a good blazer. You're, you're going to look sharp this season. <laughs> the bummer was I gave them theirs first. I told them what theirs thing was, which was fucking Nintendo. Oh, Big deal. That that's the biggest deal. Anything before 1990, if you got a Nintendo before the fucking Sega. Now, these kids were so lily white vanilla. Where were they from? Do you remember? Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio. Okay, so they're it's from all, It's all where my dad lives. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're coming from fucking South Philly, dog. Coming from garbage-ass West Philly. West Philly, yeesh. So I go up, th I go up there, and I, I'm like, yeah, you guys got Nintendo. And I'm, and I'm, even, I'm even like a scumbag enough kid enough to this point to know... Like a conniving single child at this point to go, just guys, when you when you get it, though, like... Act surprised. Go big, man. <laughs> like, you gotta go big. <laughs> Do not fuck this up. Yeah. You gotta go big. You gotta go big. They're like, no, you got it. And they were like, almost before they even, like, I watched them do it. Almost before they opened the paper, they were like, Nintendo! And like, rip, then ripped the paper off, and like, and all, it's like out of the box in two seconds, and they're already setting it up. But not with like this, like... That's like every movie. Not with this, like, you're, the parents were hoping for... By the way, sometimes you don't get this anyway, but the parents were hoping for... Like, the, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, this is amazing, and hugs again. They were, just like, they were just like, in their minds, they've been waiting two weeks to fucking plug this thing in. One of my favorite, I watched a lot of commercials at my grandma's, because that's what you do. One of my favorites is this year they put uh, Le Chic Freak Out mm -hmm. to uh, kids freaking out on Christmas morning, and it's hilarious. It's just one of those commercials where you're like, that just works perfectly. Little kids freaking out to Le, uh, to Le Chic. Hey! Of course he has a giant orange coat. He looks like a goddamn hurricane <laughs> correspondent. Uh, um, but that's like in, 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 oh, here's the commercial I was talking about <laughs> it's Typhoon Williams here on the scene perfect that's, fuck, one of that's fucked up because the black kid just got socks and, oh. he, was, and he was as happy the Chinese kid got an abacus <laughs> he's like I learned to count the old way it's a good Walmart commercial but uh uh, so, it, it, I mean, you got to sell that if you're going to know it. They didn't sell. I mean, believe me, I was still like, cool, sweater, sweet, thick wool. So I leave and my, I get the phone call from my dad with Dan on the phone because they have to dress me down about. And my stepmother says, at that point, she told me I wasn't welcome in her home anymore, which my dad. Because you her, revealed there was a Nintendo? Yeah. I'm like, even if I'm just a kid enough to even know, I'm like. Hey, this is kind of like a common thing kids do, man. Let's not make this a whole fucking thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But she... Do you think like, Diane was gunning for you the entire time to get you out? I do. Do I you think, think... Do you think I think dad, when I wasn't a cute little kid and I was like a fat little ball that came over, yeah. I wasn't... I didn't, really, I didn't really fit into her like... She was trying to X me out of family pictures. That's... Oh, my God. Seriously? In front of a girlfriend, dude. Dude, that's... That is vicious. In that's front of mean. a girlfriend I brought to, up there on vacation, and my dad goes, you got to come to the family pictures. And I was like, I don't even want to come. I'm like, I'm, like nah, I'm okay. And he goes, no, you got to come. And then uh, they did, you know, they did like, you know, my, you know, my stepmother's sister's family, yeah. and then they, they were going to do one all together. And we go, now the uh, the Okersons come in now? And my dad goes, Jace, come on. You know, it's gonna, and my stepmother goes, oh... I thought it was going to be like our family. In front of my girlfriend, I was like, oh. I'm like, I'm like at school, I don't want to. I hate pictures. <laughs> your heart's, oh, I hate pictures your heart's anyway. so shattering. You're like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Also, because it's one of those things you just feel coming, and you're like, let me just get. Yeah, you don't want to do Let me it. dodge this whole thing. I don't want it to be family pictures. I'm visiting here to, to show you that I do comedy. That's when what you, I was doing. Yeah, when I, you, I was like oh, 19, I just started. Oh, dude, that sucks because there's nothing like getting bumped out. My first question is do you think your dad had two? phone calls with Diane the way
way he did with you, where you're on the phone, you're like, no, Jason's going to be in the family pictures, right? And she's like, sure, that'll be great. And then you leave and you go, hey, Diane, listen, I don't want the kid around either. <laughs> he goes, but what can I do? He's my seed. I got to deal with him. I so gotta make, I got to make this little fucking there, happy. I, and maybe, you know, some of our listeners have had this happen, but there's not a worse feeling of being the outside kid, especially when you're an only child of another kid and then you're like brought into the family and then the fan, you just And know, quickly, he's got two more. Yeah, dude, that's like, and then you're like this outside thing, which basically now. See, I was inside for my mom's kids being born. I was like their big brother. I was, exactly. I was you living lived, there. Yeah. You lived in the house. But when you're the outside element, you're kind of like a representation of your mom. So then that for it just makes that's everything what, that's fucked up. Exactly the story of why my stepmother just to this day. Yeah, it's like, because you're wrong. Unimpressed and does not like me. Because when I would go to, uh, I was not even being a childish thing about that. My stepmother could not. She couldn't tell you what my birthday is. She doesn't know Isabella. My dad. My dad called me the other week and he, he goes, "How's Isabella?" I'm like, "Good." I mean, she turned 14 like three weeks ago. And he's like, "Oh, that's great." I'm like, it's your only grandchild. Yeah, he doesn't it. know her birthday still. But that's just fucking. Can't crazy. change those spots, leopard. Yeah, you can't. You but. I know you, Leopard. You can't change... That's great. It's this boy's life. Yeah. yeah I know you, Leopard. You hey, can't... Leopard. You can't change those spots, Leopard. I wish Diane would have that conversation with you. And you'd be like, I get it, Diane. But I, I was telling you guys the story at the stand when we were out back about my ma, uh, about my dad's girlfriend and his kids. And we started talking about that, about how they kind of hated me because I was Gary's real kid. They liked my dad. And I, was the rep- I represented my mom, who to them, my mom was like educated had a good job like you know it was like she was a bad bitch trisha's a bad bitch she takes care of her shit so i remember going to that family and them like giving me the attitude of like whatever you fancy like city kid because he was like podunk fucking california so they're like oh this faggy kid that reads books i'm like my mom forces me to read three american classics a summer i'm sorry i have to do this (laughs) trish makes me read fucking three books a summer it's i'm gonna get grounded if i don't but they're like like that all that attitude when you walk in the room like what's up like that kind of thing which i remember that that picture i think i may have taken the picture because i thought it was hilarious Oh, dude, that's so funny, because you were like 11 or 12, right? So you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're like, ew, Joe's all shirtless. See, what's funny, what we're talking about is like your parents when they were sexy, like when they were hot, and then they had you. My dad and mom were never sexy. This was my dad when he was my age right now. Fucking our car funkle, dude. Dude, look at that. That's my dad at that's 34. Dad, that's your dad at your age? That, Shut up, That's dude. my dad three years younger than me. Shut up. David Crosby? Yeah, dude. Tell me that guy doesn't party. Man, you're... Shout out, Izzy. You're keeping your hair. <laughs> you're keeping your hair nice, dude. Yeah, dude. My dad lost his hair by the time he was like 40. It was all you could look like fucking white George Jefferson right now. Oh, dude, man. He had it permed until yeah. the day he died, dude. I he kept it fucking, it. dude, permed up. Got that but, curly Jufro look, yeah, dude, and that mustache. That's that that haircut begs for a mustache. If you have that kind of curly thing, you're like, oh, okay. without a doubt, yeah. But your it mom, was, but we saw a young, young picture of your mom, uh, not long ago, and, and the well, dish had some some uh, some stems on her. Well, here's the picture of the dish that you saw. That's like a throwback, which is you got to understand this is spiteful. I'm getting my life back together. Fuck my ex husband, Trish. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But, like, but, I, but I see. But I'm seeing Trish. Like the, when I see Trish, uh, Mama oh, Sona, now she's, she's like thirty yeah, she, some years older than this. So it's I like, mean, you know. dude, she's like, she's an old lady now. But yeah, dude, where oh, I'll find it. Yeah, dude, it's one of those pictures where you're like, oh, she's, she's an older. Lady. She's an older lady. Then she's she still has needs. God, I don't think she does. I don't like to think that she does. Dan, I, I Dan she's an needs. adult woman, and she has <laughs> needs, and she has I, wants, Dan. Yeah, dude, that's band. like I'm getting, I'm get, I got your kid. I'm taking him yeah. with me. Oh, and yeah. I'm like this. I'm like, I like Dick Tracy. <laughs> dude, the dish looks like she looks like she was a, a waitress at a strip club. She never got yeah, food. Yeah, look at that. Look at the hair. Look at that arc, dude. I that curl, that. the like wave you, over. Looks like you grew up and dressed like her. <laughs> yeah, dude, I did. I'm like, dude, and then look at this kid. That kid just. I, along. What I really should tell my mom to get is pictures of herself young, and you see my mom, my, Yo, my, my at, mom being young. Tweet at us at the Bonfire SXM or email us at the Bonfire at SiriusXM.com. Send pictures, pictures of your parents when they're hot. 
Cindy, I want to see your parents when they were fuckable, dude. I got to yeah. show you guys. This is it's so similar to your dad's style. Oh, what, well, dude, I'm telling you right now, Christine, your dad and my dad would been a problem together. Oh, yeah. They would have ended up in my dad's VW, and he'd be like, hey, pal, listen, we're in Mendocino right now, and uh, we're a little hammered. We can't get back, but we're going to hang out. They'd have been wrapped around a telephone pole in a fucking Buick on our way to an Ambrosia concert. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did your dad be have a bug? Yeah, dude, my dad drove a, a yellow V-dub. Oh, we had two. Which, by the way, the 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 uh, whatever you call it, like the lining of the <laughs> when you walked in, the lining of the roof of the oh, car yeah. was falling oh, out. Geez. So it was Every, like, and then he crazy. traded it straight up, traded it for Mercedes Benz from like '87. But he just loved having a Benz. He just loved that it had the fucking the Mercedes Benz. Um, what's those called that people used to rip off? Hood ornament? Hood ornament. Yeah. He had, he'd had the hood ornament, and he's like, dude, I got a Benz. And you're like, dude, you're a bartender at a bowling alley. You got that because you traded in a VW. It's not a Benz Benz. This is like a fucking, I, you have it in name alone. I just texted my mom. Also, if you have sexy pictures of yourself, also so funny, dude. If someone you. got your phone and you're like, "Why are you texting your mom? Do you have sexy?" Pictures? I just want to see what she was. Up. I want to see what was up with her. But see, what I was saying is like, when Isabella has kids their age, and if they were doing this, they'd just be like, "Go to my mom's ex boyfriend's Instagram," and you could just like look back and be like, "Whoa, that's what he looked like." Oh, Where... yeah, the documentation is so so different now. Yeah, so there's, different. Not, there's so few. Like my mom exactly. She what she's gonna do right now is go through a box in a closet. Yeah, and she's going to be like, found it. Pick pictures, yeah. yeah she's going to have to like move a letter and be like, oh, here's the picture of Joe just letting it all hang out. Dude, he's wearing <laughs> shades. He's so tan. Yes. Joe was already, he's already a dark-skinned guy, but he would tan down to look like ridiculous, dude. And he had like, and then when he lived with us for a little while, I remember at one point he took a modium AD every day because for like over a year or something, he just had like violent diarrhea all the time. He lost like a ton of weight. What? He got like thin, which was very weird for Joe. That's like, like very like, unhealthy that he was just pounding a modium AD every day for a year. And just fucking fire and heat. Yeah, honest to God, in hindsight, it was probably stress. He was 27. He went from being like a cokehead who went into the military, got out of the military, you know, just did like the basic stuff of military. Yeah, yeah did four years of service. Yeah. And then like, uh, Got out of that. Actually, he may have had like a medical leave. Like I think he didn't do the full years for medical reasons. Um, but it was like broken. Something, you know what I mean? Like yeah, whatever. So he like uh, he got out of that and then was just like working out and working at gyms and shit, GNCs. And then gets a gets a girlfriend that becomes his wife with a eleven pregnant old... immediately. Pregnant immediately, dude. Really? I mean, very few months in. She was pregnant. Man, I'll tell you, that's the one difference I had where where my mom met Nick. It was kind of like a real slow roll into it where she's like, do you like Nick? And I'm like, yeah, I, I like Nick. And she's like, he's going to start coming around more. And I'm like, yeah, no, he's cool. He's cool. We can hang out. And then she's like, I think Nick's going to move in with us. And I was like, all right, I'm down with that. And Joe, then eventually, I just started seeing wife beaters around our house. And I knew Joe that's was coming. So funny. <laughs> Dude, when I knew my mom was banging my Joe, bad Joe, not good Joe. Um, it was like a fucking storm. It was like a <laughs> bad rainstorm, and he was supposed to be our quote unquote roommate. And then I walked by <laughs> his bedroom door was next to my bedroom door, and I looked open, and the door wasn't open. It was like open. To, it was a jar, and uh, bed completely made, and his fucking dumb boat shoes were just sitting there. And I was like, "That son of a bitch, plow mom." Oh, he sure as fuck ain't sleeping on the second. couch. He supposedly. You was to have his own bedroom? Yeah, he's supposed to be our roommate. Really? Yeah, my mom. So he wasn't supposed I, to be your roommate. He was no. He's supposed to be our roommate. That's what he's supposed to be. He was like he wasn't so, going to date your mom. No, I don't know if I've ever told the full story about how Joe. So Joe and my dad. You and your mom were about to have a roommate together. <laughs> yeah, we needed one. We needed we needed a roommate to keep the house. My That's mom fair. Like, that's fair. I didn't like, know that though. That's such interesting news. That you and your mom always had a roommate. No, we never always had. No, we didn't have a roommate. My mom was like, "We're, we're well, of course not." Your mom starts fucking, and they become boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, <laughs> can't have a roommate when someone like that's living there. <laughs> when you when you got a Venus flytrap right in the house, <laughs> you <it> all up. <laughs> yeah, got him. Yeah. So she. Um, like you know, we had we had our house or whatever. My mom, my mom did all right. My mom was pretty successful 
for like, but she was by herself and, you know, raising me or whatever. And then she bought this house with my aunt. And I think she like bought a house that was a little out of her range. It was like a three bedroom. It's a, it was a nice house, dude. A old 70s style. Colin Quinn explained it perfectly where he was like, yeah, I knew where you grew up in Aurora. Let me guess. Nice in the 60s and 70s, decayed in the 80s and 90s. I was like, yeah, that's uh, pretty much where it was. Do you have a nice but, sunken, do you have a sunken living room? Yes, we did. We had a sunken living room. Really? Sunken living room. We really did. And it was hilarious. We had a good Christmas tree. It was nice, man. But my mom, because I think my mom like always wanted to, she's like one of those women that's like driven. She was like, I'm going to have a nice suburban life and busted her ass to get it. But it took borrowing money from her sister and have dudes become her fucking roommate. (laughs) Dude, the whole reason, the whole reason Joe lived with us was because. Uh, I it was like ninety five or ninety six, and I hadn't talked to my dad in two years, and so I was like, "Yo, all or it was like a, either a year or two, and I was like, "Yo, I'll call dad, and you should call Joe and Lynn, who they were family friends. He was my godfather, and yeah. him and his wife were married in Connecticut, and like my parents were like, it was their friends you know what i mean they're like we're going to joe and lynn's and everyone would be like yeah sure. so we'd always go over to their house because joe had a pool and so we'd go fucking hang you know i remember being like five years old at his house that's where my mom's 40th surprise birthday party was it was at joe's house we moved to colorado we don't talk to him like they lost touch but i was like yo mom they were always good friend of yours why don't you talk and she's like i don't know so i moved to denver there was no internet so if you didn't call someone actively you weren't friends with it. You know what I mean? You just like lost touch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sent Christmas cards. You'd call them and you'd be like, I don't know. I haven't talked to that dude in fucking eight years. So uh, my mom, I'm like, for some reason, dude, I walked myself into this situation. I'm telling you it's my fault this fucking asshole lived with us when I was a teenager. Because I told my mom, I was like, Yo, you call Joe and Lynn. I'll call dad. Let's just do that. Let's just be the bigger people here. You know who's rad? Joe. I swear to God, it was like that kind of energy where I was like, remember who I was, you know, what? Uh, really it's the worst them? when somebody lets you down too. like when you do like them at one point, it's all it's theirs to lose. Every time, by the way, I'd meet a stepmother. When yeah, I was younger. Like, uh, I was super excited. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was like, oh, yeah, well, hell, hell yeah. Like, fuck well, it. listen, I understand some people go into this like, fuck you. You're not my dad. You're not going to be my dad. I knew that my dad had fucked up the situation. So with me, I was never mad at the boyfriends of my mom's. I was always like, eh, who are you? I was more like, what are you doing here? Are you going to be cool or not? But I was never like, stop <laughs> it. That's my mommy. I was like, yeah, you're, 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 you're smoking a butt in like the doorway of the garage. And you go, she's going to break your heart, bro. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I do the thing where I go, you better not hurt her. You better not hurt her. <laughs> you better not hurt her. You hurt her. I hurt you. you yeah. understand that? Me ah, so, yeah. So you're the new lip of chaw that she's just gonna spit <laughs> out. <laughs> He's like, "Who are you, kid?" Lip of chaw. Um, she. So she calls. I call my dad. He doesn't pick up. Doesn't call me back. <laughs> That's uh, cool. you know how bad, shitty of a dad you have to be to hear a voicemail from your 11 year old son and be like. This was answering machine days. So you call me like, hi, dad. Just want to see how old you are. You know, Olympics are coming up. And he's just like, I'll get to it. Um, Dude, my dad, just real quick. My yeah. dad came a running once. Once ever did he come a running over from wherever he was. Not to see me, just to confront a situation. And it was when uh, Uncle Tommy, his stepbrother, since he was a kid, started yeah. uh, pork and tear really that's uh, when he showed up showed up harsh showed up harsh showed up angry then apparently uh as everything by the way he told me uh like pretty young too when he was like my my first stepmother when they broke up uh you know it was just he just it's simple he met diane like diane more she was younger i guess the time than uh than kathy was and he liked diane and he hooked up with her and Move to Ohio for whatever, right? That's that's what happened for sure. So wait, when he was with Kathy, was he in Philly? Uh he, he, Delaware, Jersey. But I'm saying, was uh, he uh, was he was was he near? He was, Philly? He, was, he, was, he was always like an hour away from me. Everywhere he lived, great. That's yeah, yeah. that's that that's exactly where you want. Where you're like, yeah, my dad's an hour away. Whatever. Yeah, he was supposed him. to get me every other weekend. <laughs> yeah, dude. When that falls off, by the way, and we're children before the internet. When that falls off, you're kind of just like, what's up? <laughs> just all of a sudden, yeah, one weekend, yeah, you're yeah. like, 
going to dad's and then you're like no you're not going to dad my mom was straight up just like yo your dad moved to san francisco so that every other weekend shit yeah. off the charts i don't have any uh any like technical well, like 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 set in stone schedule with isabella but i see isabella every week you, you know man I mean? you had pre-covid you guys did tuesday nights uh you go out to dinner and you had sundays i mean sundays, for the longest yeah. for the longest i've known you it's always been sundays you're gonna see isabella and then you guys tuesday started incorporating times, yeah. tuesday nights for dinner which is like yeah. That's all a kid wants is consistency. Dude, I would have been fine if my dad would only see me every summer. I would have been like, fuck yeah, dude. Because there was a point where I started accepting that. Where I was sure, like, okay, sure, I, sure. Can, I can go out to San Francisco for three weeks at a time during the summer. And then I was year-round schooling. So I'd be like, and winter vacation, I can go spend three weeks in San Francisco. And yeah. then when that shit stops, you're like, so we don't even do that anymore? Like, that's pretty yeah. Yeah, you know, my dad came hauling for that. But anyway, oh, and he, oh, and he, did he how did he approach the situation? Was he like in, did he like walk in the place and be like, you fucking my ex-wife? Are you fucking my ex-wife? No, no, I don't think he even got to my mom ever. He came down like, like asked me maybe some bet, maybe talk to my mom. About, I don't really remember like the outcome of it. It was just like, but what he did beyond that, I believe, which is, I might be wrong about this, but I know he told me the other one. It's when he left uh, Kathy for Diane. Yeah. He did end up telling me later that, Kathy and his friend Kevin, who's like his pool playing buddy. Yeah. Uh, Kathy and Kevin had fucked behind my dad's back, which is like, if it makes sense, like, nah, dude, I don't think so. Like, yeah. maybe, maybe, but like, I don't think so at all. What, you don't and think that, that his friend fucked K Kathy? I don't think Kathy would have fucked his friend. Dude. She was just like, I don't know, dude. She was like such like a, just a sweet lady. Have you, you ever looked her, have you looked her up? Try. I gotta try, dude. We gotta uh, try. We got. Let's let's do an episode where we find our old step parents. Yeah, I would love, I could, to dude. I would dude, love to find Nick. Kathy, Nick is the Kathy, shit. If I could have Kathy come on this show, dude. If I could have the Nick, stories of give the stories of my dad, dude, because I'm sure he is not a pleasant memory for her. Oh my god, dude. I would love to hear about how Trish just wore down Nick like a Mexican fighter, just kept <laughs> coming forward, just taking blows and exchanging them. My mom, dude. I watched her bite him down like a termite <laughs> like you were just like dude this guy was so big and sweet he was just like this big guy it's like i don't know trish and then she'd be like ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> he's just like Fuck out that. but yeah man I, let's do let's do an episode let's try to find an episode where we get both of our old step parents on the show because i would yeah, love to also hear nick's perspective of my little feminine ass being raised by a woman you know but i still oh, like yeah. boy stuff but i'm like hey, do that nick and he's just like shut up kid i'm trying to show you how a transmission works buddy kathy will be able to tell you the story of us having to leave disney world in a half hour oh your I thunder vest i was having, I was, yeah. having an, I was having an autistic freak out dude there's so many times i would love to ask nick about like yo what was it like and then also i want to ask nick nick was cool with my dad like my dad would call our house and talk to nick for like 20 minutes and i'd just be like standing there at the kitchen phone like what's up he asked me am i on yet and he's like, no, nah, I'm going over. I'm going over Dude, the light. If I could find my stepbrothers, I bet they were like, yo, fuck that guy. I mean, he probably represents something so shitty in their life. Yo, let's do it. Let's actually do it. Let's find a way to find Kathy and her sons, and we'll find Nick. And yeah, we'll fuck Josh him. and Chris. Josh and Chris, I remember uh, well because they lived with him. Like the other one went to go live with the dad. His name was Jay. He was a ginger. Oh, the, uh, man. But the younger two, uh, Josh and Chris, who I thought were the coolest, by the way. Oh, man. Whatever, it would just be like, interesting to see what they're doing now. Dude, going over there and just watching them, I would just sit on the couch and, like, watch them make out with, like, their girlfriends. And they were like, <laughs> but they were like, they did all, like, stylish stuff they tried to do. So maybe making out with a girl and them, them and the girl be wearing, like, Corey Feldman hats. God, you know what I mean, man, like that kind of shit. Just the coolest. Just yeah. the coolest. Yeah. I, they were the ones I told you they wore half tops uh, with, like, a button-down shirt open over it and like i tried to do it once and it's just like a fat kid doing that as a fight look i was wearing a sports bra <laughs> dude they i um it's 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 weird because there was a, a camper dm me and was like yo man i think i work at a fish cannery in alaska with with joe and linda my you know and, I was like, <laughs> and, I, and he's like do you want me to say something to him and i'm like no nah, man i don't like them they're not people that i'm like Fuck yes. What are they up to? I'm kind of like, those are like people where I'm like, man, y'all were shitty to me and my mom. You could fuck off. But Nick was a G. 
and I just watched my mom kind of wear him down. So him, I would want to reach out and be like, Dude, Nick Cotts, how the fuck are you? Like, you are yeah, a good dude. dude. He's a straight up good man. He was always nice to me when I was a kid, and it sucked. It sucks when you have a stepdad you like, and I'm sure you felt this way about Kathy because, as you said, your dad chose Diane over Kathy. But when your your parent makes that person leave or leaves that person, you're kind of like, "Fuck you!" No, I'm cool with that one. That was my pick. The, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, like yeah. a head coach okay, and the uh, general manager is like, we're moving on with this contract. And you're like, no, 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 no. That was good. That worked. That worked perfectly. I mean, I'm glad I have my, like, brothers, I guess. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, uh, so I'm fine that, like, you know, ultimately how it worked out. But, dude, I bet, I bet for Kathy, dude, like, it is just a. Yeah, like, I want, it, I want Nick to be honest and be like, yo, your mom was a bitch. And you're, like, you're a bitch. <laughs> bitch which by the way you are you're such a bitch <laughs> how long was your mom with nick and how long was your dad with kathy that's like, a good question my mom dated nick from when i was she was she dated him and married him i want to say from seven to twelve. Oh wow so my, mo so my mom was with nick either seven or eight I'm, it might be eight but like eight to twelve and then Joe was thirteen to sixteen, and then it was. It's wow. been. And then my mom's dated some other Keith. Shout out Keith. Shout out Randy. Shout out some <laughs> other ones making it weird. <laughs> but my mom's like those two guys were the ones because I moved out of the house when I was seventeen. So it was uh, those were the only two guys I I had to really deal. I mean, there were other guys. Right. Oh, there were other men. But I'm saying like the ones that lived with us. Those were the two That's, dudes. My mom. For my mom. For my mom. It was Jr. and Joe. Those were the two biggies in, in my time. Yeah. Dude, JR that's... was the one that moved to D.C. He was a radio DJ. Yeah. And uh, and then Joe. Yeah, dude, they're, um, I mean, I remember my mom going on dates, but my mom didn't let the dates meet me till it was like three dates in. She's like, All right, I'm gonna, this guy, he's going to sleep over. That's weird. That's the weird one. They're like, my friend's going to stay over. And you're like, like when you get to the age, you're like, ugh. All right. Oh, Jesus Christ. I wanted to wake up on Saturday and watch X-Men on Fox. I didn't want this fucking guy sitting in the living room going, so what do you like about school? And you're like, I like my Cocoa Puffs, and I like the fact that fucking Mr. Perfect has the Intercontinental T Championship. That's what I like right now. What I don't need is you smelling like dried puss asking me a bunch of Q. Hey, you want to cut the Q&A? I'm trying to watch Demolition here, guy. Uh, yeah, I, I never liked that. But then, you know, when they live with you, it's a different story. Yeah, my mom came in with Joe. Hot. The other guys she, like, dated or went on dates with were, like, kind of inconsequential. I don't even remember them very much. I but how long I remember the guy playing guitar for my mom, for sure. That guy's great. That guy's, a, that guy's an all-time... I would say in the histories of mom's boyfriends, that guy's a Hall of Famer. I, I agree with that, too. Christina Doris, you should check it. Jay, I think that's a Hall of Famer and the guy who said that the, my Dodge Stratus was a pussy, was like a gay. gay <laughs> as soon as he walks up. <laughs> as soon as he walks up, just takes that shot. He goes, that's mouth. a gay car. And you're like, that's my car. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go fuck your mom. Yeah. Uh, hey, who's the Mo? <laughs> yeah. What's so funny is, by the way, I think my dad, the first time I did like a try to complain to my dad of like, uh-oh, the first time I tried to complain to my dad about uh, like Joe, so yeah, like Joe did this or something like that. It was like, I mean, when, it, when my Uncle Tommy was banging my mom, he drove yeah. from wherever he was at. When I said, I think Joe's doing something to me, he goes, uh, he was like, keeps that shit up. I'll knock his ass. He was like, so I'm just like, blank, Dude, not doing anything. Anymore. Also, how great is it that your dad had such a guy reaction to be like, better not do it again or I'm going to teach him a lesson? And you're watching Joe just rep 415. Hang on, Ari's walking into the house. <laughs> Shafir, god damn it before the break we were talking about people uh men with dual families with like two families because well, we didn't have we were talking about having a shitty father you mean like gambino banana like you belong to both no not crime <laughs> families <laughs> actual platonic, having a shitty father yeah. like me and dan and, oh. and, and isabella over here mm -hmm. <laughs> Is i think you've seen the recipient of the I second generation of all yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. i think you've seen what my work has done there <laughs> there it is but we're talking about like um you know if you have a shitty dad, you like you want have to be, step siblings, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying you want to be a better. If you were to have a kid, right? It would make, we're, uh, you know, Lewis was an example of that. Like Lewis J. Gomez, great oh, father, yeah. really tough. You know, had a dad that got murdered, was not in his life. And then he's a great dad, right? So we were saying, how fucked or up? He's at least he, a living dad. Yeah, he's a living yeah, dad. He's alive. My thought was, 
I think what would fuck me up psychologically more than having a dead dad would be having a dad that's alive with another family and hiding it from you. Like living with you at your house oh, and you with your mom like, okay. and then goes and has another family. Like lifetime There's a character on level. Billions, Dollar Bill, that has that. Yeah, my dad didn't do that. My dad, like... Like a legit, your dad went out and was just like a single dude, swanky he, swinger. Dude, yeah. he fucking was an indoor cat. Oh, and they let him yeah. outside and he did not come home. <laughs> oh, Dan's dad like, wore sunglasses. I'm an outdoor cat now. Just Dad's dad wore sunglasses. He wore sunglasses at night for sure. <laughs> dude, my dad definitely had. I remember. Uh, Is your dad still alive? Do you know? No, my dad died when I was 14. Oh, shit. Yeah, he went out. Uh, he uh, uh, and Lewis's dad killed each other. Uh, yeah, in a, in a duel. Like, it was pretty... uh, like of AIDS or another STD? Oh, or... I wish. He, okay. uh, oh, yeah, not far. Hep no. C that turned into cirrhosis. Really? Yeah, yeah that eventually yeah. became AIDs. My dad, that's because he got Hep C from a Posthum- <laughs> His body posthumously it became AIDS. His ashes got AIDS. I hope he got the Hep C from a dirty tattoo needle where he was getting his other family no, name man. tattooed. No, man. <laughs> oh, dude, that would have been great. He was getting Skip, his favorite son. His other son that I don't know about. That's where he got the Uh, Who's Marcus? Uh, Uh, It's actually Marquise, and uh, that is your brother. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. and he is actually a D1 prospect. Uh, (laughs) And on some level, that would be ironic, dying from that tattoo. Yeah, no, he... Isn't it ironic? He he, uh, got it, I think, banging some piece of fucking lake trash. Which lake? Lake Lake Tahoe? Uh, uh, Clear Lake. In Northern California, ironically titled Clear Lake, yeah, it wasn't clear. <laughs> where he got some hips, <laughs> murky some as fuck. Mur- <laughs> Dude, not only that, but he, he fucked a-, a wide mouth bass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my dad was into fish. He was like Troy McClure. <laughs> My dad was had the Troy McClure sexual would fetish. Go, Dan's dad used to go oaky noodling with his dick. <laughs> yeah, he goes, hey, do you want to go... Uh, we goes, get a catfish? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Arms up. I, I feel like what I feel. Uh, yeah, oh, there he is. He goes, you want to go to the fish market? Just look around. <laughs> I like the idea of your dad banging a rainbow trout to a fish album. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. going to make this last the whole solo. Goes, oh, yeah. have you ever had tantric <laughs> fish <laughs> sex? <laughs> you fuck as long as they jam. Rainbow <laughs> trout. I ain't gay. I ain't no gay fish. <laughs> Be- Do what's crazy is that my dad got hep C from this lady yeah. and it killed him, but it also killed his sister because she was a nurse, my aunt. She came to take care of him and he threw up blood and it got in her eye and she Jesus got hep C. Christ. Oh yeah. my God. And then last Thanksgiving when I'm at my grandma's. That's, when, that's, back so when his dad, that's back when Dan's dad was dating Hepatitis Cheryl. <laughs> right, right, right. Hep Cheryl? Yeah. That, that sounds like a bad scene, like a bad scene in Oz. Yeah. yeah. Like like your, your other gave life. her a fucking yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Jay goes, what's your name? Oh, my name's AIDS Jay. <laughs> Ah. What are you in for? Oh, Gonner- Gonorrhea Gary? Lot- oh, yeah. yeah. What are you in for? A lot of bloody stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of. Mo- well, I bleed a lot, so I leave a lot of evidence behind. <laughs> and I also finger paint with my blood. It's <laughs> yeah. a whole thing. My. What's fun? Uh, this is. Anyway, th- I usually coat myself up. in se- my own semen. <laughs> this is so whatever. Up. This is fucked up, but it made me laugh. My, yeah. I was playing. I always play cards with my grandma when I see her. We play. And there's no TV in that room. But college football's always on because it's like Thanksgiving. So right. I keep the TV on to listen to what college football game's going on. And my grandma and I are playing cards. Cards, and it's like I cured my hepatitis C in 14 days, and it's just like I'm like, hey, Nana, I'm trying to distract her. Oh, over here! Oh, both of her kids got taken out by this disease that this commercial is just talking shit about. Where it's wow. like, and I cured it scot free in a week. And my grandma's like, yeah, gin. Yeah, every they, time they, I hear it, it gets me uh, warm fuzzies all over again. You are a fantastic grandson. Oh, thanks, man. You really wait, are. Wait, wait, what do you mean? Like you every year, at least once. Plays, yeah, I mean, plays I cards yeah. with the grandma. Yeah, well, I go. But he out goes out there and spends like a weekend there. Yeah, but I'm all she has. Yeah, in literally. Colorado? No, in San Francisco, north of San Francisco. But he really does. County, but he really does is, what he's just saying. He's like sitting there playing gin rummy. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff, Did you, you know? say Lake County? Lake County. Get away from that. Get away from the lake, man. No, my grandma lives on the lake. Move her out of there. Yeah, she's she's not, she likes it. <laughs> all of her old friends are there, and they're all dying. She's so not, she's not fucking sad. Is she still fucking hepatitis, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> she go, I go, Hep, Hep Emmett. You have to give an old name. <laughs> <laughs> Hepatitis Emmett comes Hep- around every once in a while. Yeah. Oh, oh my Herman! I've never. What are, are there other? Are there other hepatitises of the other twenty-five letters of the alphabet? There's A and B. There is A and A. B. You get okay. from eating shit or like food. You can get it from. I thought food. B is yeah. also you can get the beep 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 beep. Go Bayside. Beep 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 beep. Yeah, um, but she's the she's the dead. She she the- gets you, but now they can cure it. Ah. My dad got it in ninety-seven. Died of it in ninety-seven. My aunt died of it in oh seven, and she like extended her life she was boozing 
Hank Aaron could rip it. Would your dad? Would you? Would you? If you were time, could you? Would you travel back in time with the cure to cure your dad, or would you let him go? Do you have any, That's a good question. Yeah, do you have any uh, love yeah. for your father at all? Yeah, I'd cure it. Yeah, just to talk shit. So I could fight him. Just fight him, yeah. Like a boy named Sue. <laughs> yeah. Gary, I'm going to cure you, and that's then I'm going to kick the shit out of you. That's a great fucking My country song Sue. right there. How do you do? <laughs> my name is Hepatitis Dan. How do you do? Well, my daddy left. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I would go back and save you him. spell Sue with a C and like I'd an oomlot on top? Sa- I'd definitely save my aunt. <laughs> Yeah, with a Sue. Or like Sue Dominic the, Sue. Yeah, yeah, if I had to go pick, like if you made me choose in my aunt or my dad, that'd be tougher. This this is a great, this is a Sophie's great choice uh, version of this song. Is well, I time I went and traveled back in time with the cure for hepatitis. Found my dad. And I found my dad drinking at a bar. It was the bowling alley I worked at. I walked in. I said, I said, hey, dad, I missed you. He said it's five o'clock somewhere, and he said I'm at Margaritaville. Who are you? <laughs> Oh, what's your name? Hey, it's the big-headed kid I had with the mean bitch. <laughs> Just fucking cuts you to the core. Like, oh. The big-headed kid. I noticed you're staring down at my... I noticed you're staring down at my... The bitch I thought was a big mouth bass. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought, thought she, she was, was a, a fish. <laughs> Turns out she was Irish. I bet you're looking down at my quarter-length socks and some slides, but... Dude, my dad didn't wear socks. At all. No, my dad wore boat shoes in fucking corduroy shorts with no underwear. I love boat shoes. No, fucking, and liquor no wonder you got so much action. Dude, my dad dressed for cirrhosis. <laughs> <laughs> they, say, they say dress for the disease you want. <laughs> 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 my dad dressed for... <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh man! I wear a lot of scar- uh, I, wear right. a lot of scar- I wear a lot of scarves on my head, prepping yeah. for cancers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I go, I go around jaunt in sweatpants <laughs> for an AIDS day. A lot of jackets. I'm dressing for scurvy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta go. Yeah. Get, get some lime. Yeah, um, yeah. My dad didn't wear socks. No yeah, underwear. I believe it. I bet it were his feet ripe. No, he had like tough Islander feet. <laughs> yes, right. It's, 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 they don't smell anymore. They don't sweat. Yeah, he just toughens he's up. Burned off all the. He burned all the. Uh, also, sweat he's glands. just drinking enough alcohol to sterilize anything on his body. <laughs> My dad, I'm surprised dad, my dad didn't dad knock that. iodine? Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised my dad didn't cure the hep C the second it touched his fucking alcohol-rich bloodstream. She catches on fire. Hep C, you say? I'll knock that out by the night. He goes, hep C, yeah. Here. Sometimes I get it when I'm bored. Yeah. I just watch something it. something to do. I heal like Wolverine. You know, I go out there and give myself lockjaw just for fun. Yeah, just do it. Wait, what's your dad's name? Dean? Gary. That's Gar- why we're sons of Gary. Sons His of- dad, he has a shitty dad named Gary, too. Oh, man. That's why we're so close. Dude, if someone would have busted out a Buffett, uh, Jimmy Buffett medley at my dad's funeral, that would have <laughs> fucking killed. If you would have gone, like, Margaritaville into Cheeseburger in Paradise into Son of a Sailor, you'd get <laughs> You go, this is a lovely ceremony. I goes, what's with the uh, steel drums in the back there? He goes, oh, you'll, you'll, see. See. You'll, see. you'll see. You'll see. You'll what's see. What's up with all the you'll fake see. parrots around here? Don't worry. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, I noticed back there, kind of under that tarp that's sort of falling over behind the casket, is a uh, a bunch of beer guns. What's that about? Hey, Nana, <laughs> Nana, I'm gonna need you to stall while I put on my corduroy shorts and I grab my teal T-shirt that I need to put on <laughs> with wristbands. He goes, I don't know if they're a friend of the uh, friend of the family at all, but there is six girls outside in blue bikinis wearing trench coats holding glasses with jello shots on them. Do they have so super they, smokers? Goes, yeah, he goes, but t- I told them they, they know they know they have to wait outside until yeah. the ceremony's over. They know it goes Billy Joel, <laughs> classic Catholic <laughs> prayer, and then when they hear me in medley, they're gonna kick open the doors. <laughs> I I almost forgot. We have so many funny things out on this show that I <laughs> fucking only the good night young call mouth with you, you but don't book it too. Dude, my dad's funeral. We're just like all sad. It's like, come out, Virginia. <laughs> we're on it to dump there. I just remember looking at my sister and going, he was 48. <laughs> Did you know that song? What's that? Did you know that song when you heard that story? I had like heard it on the radio. Uh, but you didn't. So you, you knew it when you heard it. It wasn't the first time you ever heard it at the funeral. No, it wasn't the first time I ever because heard it. Because if it's the first time you ever hear that song, and I, we talked about the beginning of that song, because it's, it's the. The piano part makes me be like, oh, this could be an emotional song. And then it's just that. She could do that. Do that. Do that. Come out, Virginia. Well, they say that I'm wrong, but the boop, the boop, the cat, the girl star way too late. But nobody's going to be in here, fun. I don't want to get good. 
Well, the we have, well, I may have fucked you underage and spit in your mama's pasta. <laughs> Dude, the, the 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 weirdest part of my dad's funeral was it was sparsely attended, but uh, like his two <laughs> alcoholics. You say sparse, like everyone's like sitting, not even near each other. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. I swear to God, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> that's such a bummer. It's like an AA meeting that everyone's the first time, <laughs> and everyone in the the two guys in the back that were my dad's drinking buddies. I just remember the second it was over, they were out, and I was like, dude, I bet they're going to get fucking bagged up. They're just going oh, to get yeah. shit faced. They left and they heard only the good die young start. And he goes, "Well, let's hang for the one more song." They, uh, yeah, they know, they know, they know when to leave. Alcoholics know when to leave other alcoholics' at funerals. They're like, yeah, <laughs> get some Billy Joel, and then you, then we get out of here. He goes, "Once it goes to like a religious song, then we'll split." Yeah, we'll leave during the organ part. <laughs> oh, damn. oh, fucking! That's gonna be so. Oh. Good. That, that song playing is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Well, Andy unfortunately lost his father recently, and in the time of COVID. Way to bring what it up, man. Do? I was avoiding it because I didn't want to bring it up. <laughs> nah, man. You got to go head Smooth on. Smooth segue. You got to rub just, salt in the wound. Oh, dude. Well, play my dad's death jam. Play You're it. grieving and went to some crazy haircut for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, lost your spirit. Yeah, yeah, the... the uh... <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk over it? No, 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 hold on. Just let, 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 let me hit in. When you're uh, <laughs> and this part happens right here, yeah, you, I remember you, have to be, you have to be blown away. You do this. It was as our face. Honestly, uh, Jay, I can tell you now that I've been through it, it was the most end of a comedy show energy I've ever seen in my life because it was as everyone was starting to leave and they're like, you know, when they kick on the lights and they play like Love Roller Coaster, yeah. and they're like, everyone get the fuck out of here. That's what it was. They're like, everyone stood up and they're like, all right, oh, hold it to good die. And everyone was like, we're going to go. I'll, I'll see you on the parking lot. I'll see you in the uh, yeah. so, so sorry for your sorry loss. loss. So, so sorry for your loss. So, they got a night wipe jacket in the book and on your hip foundation. <laughs> I'm so sorry for your loss. I know it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult without him. If you need anything, if you need anything at all. He was like a brother to me. Well, your mama told you something about your big, you bought a hip for nature. show. But what'd you say? He loved this song. Huh? He loved it. He's a big Billy Joel guy, but uh, Merck, did you guys get a chance to have a service for your dad? Yeah, we did. We uh, So luckily, New Jersey is a little ahead of New York, so they were able to capacity at, at like 125 and okay. it was uh shitty because like you know my dad was 96 so like all our relatives like i have cousins who are in like their 60s and 70s yeah like they couldn't come and shit because they live in like texas and california oh, so, i didn't like, even like, think about that yeah that was the hard thing a lot of my friends though and my sister's friends it was, it was great it was really nice actually um did you, did you do any time what do any time no, I did. The eulogy was tough, dude. Fucking hard. Yeah, you, know, you did have that thing so after. Sure. You do have that comic thing after the eulogy where you're like, "I wonder if anybody taped that." You know? <laughs> I'm gonna put that in my reel, <laughs> dude. I did mine completely at 14. Felt like my first open mic because no one would talk, and I'd be like, "I'll talk." And yeah. I don't even remember what I said, but I was like, "I don't know how it went." I did that. like you did I eulogy did for your dad. I'm the only one that spoke. No one. Yeah, I think there was like a eulogy for my grandma, but then you know, like, Cheryl has big boobs. I go, Cheryl, I want a titty. Fuck you. I don't know what that means. I'm 14. <laughs> the only thing my dad left me was this huge hog. Thank you, dad. School sucks. And so does having a dead dad. Cheryl, <laughs> show me those cans. Super Mario three is coming out next week. And I am excited. I, hope the, town, I hope the town will take together a collection <laughs> and get it for me because I am so sad. No, 49ers yeah. rule, Brett, Har- Brett Favre's a homo. Thank you so much, Dan. That was amazing. Come out, Virginia, but dog in the day. I'm upset to want to look at the ocean. <laughs> is the ocean going to call me that, Dan? Do some ocean looking. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. I don't know what it, it is. But it's not far down to paradise. At least it's not call me. If the wind is right, you can set away. Try to get a tea. Are you thinking about my phone? Okay, yeah. No, Dan, look off. <laughs> uh, we were talking about where Fenoya on the, one of the episodes. Let me see. I can't. Yeah, Fenoya. You can uh, you tell your face going. Yeah. It's a nice, uh, nice tight smile. <laughs> we were talking about 
what kind of person we think um, with Fenoya my dad would be had he stayed alive. And I didn't realize that my dad told me when I was little that he wanted to move to Florida and live on the islands, like live in the islands. Like your Key dad, West? Key West. Your dad definitely had cocktail on VHS. Yeah, of course. Like, definitely. Yeah. He thought it was the coolest story ever. Cog- Coughlin's Law. <laughs> yeah, Coughlin. Coughlin. <laughs> Coughlin's Law states. Coughlin's Law. Go. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> Your dad wanted to be cocktail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did it so much it killed him. Coughlin's Law. Anything else is always something better. No, he just, like, really, like, no, I'm not joking when I said he was a Jimmy Buff fan. Like, he wanted that life. He wanted, like. Dan, you know it's awesome to throw bottles of booze around to? The hippie shake by the Beatles. Do you know how to make a red eye? No one does. <laughs> the hippie, hippie shake. Although that was a cocktail also for you and your dad. Yeah. Young Mimi Rogers. Massive cans. The older lady that liked him. Oh, yeah. He married her. He did marry her. Yeah. Big old tits house. Yeah. He didn't go for Elizabeth Shue, who I thought is what he would have looked for. That. that was who was the girl was, right? Yeah, that's, that's the movie I referenced when I made that joke on my Netflix special about, I thought, when you date a wealthy girl, her parents offer you checks. They should have bought you away. off. Yeah. <laughs> go I, go I missed the best part of dating a wealthy girl. When her dad offers you money, do you go away? You must not understand <laughs> yeah. How much the you- love I have for your daughter. Uh, for four to fifty thousand dollars, say it will come again. Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's in, up? In my joke, I say it's one Verizon bill. <laughs> but, uh, I said like, yeah, dude. When he says in the movie, you're like, dude, take the fucking money, dude. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? He goes, I mean, you're he goes and then she'll leave anywhere with you. Pregnant? Oh. You're good to go. GTG. Oh yeah, no, dude, dude, give me the money. I'm telling, you, I'm gonna go cash it right now, and you know, buy a buy a one way ticket on a on a steamer out of this goddamn town. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that'd be weird if my dad lived in Key West. My dad would be Florida garbage. That would have been the next evolution. Dude, your dad's like f- bo- the bottom of his feet would have been so crusty. Dude, they already were. Were they really? Dude, dude, barefoot living? Barefoot living. Hot concrete? All the time. Oh, he loved it. He didn't give a shit. He had He had a discolored toe? Yep. Discolored f- uh, toenail? <laughs> Definitely just a discolored toto for rip. some reason. Yeah, I remember him smoking butts every morning reading the paper. Perfect flip on the paper. <laughs> Perfect yeah. flip, yeah. Perfect, be reading, flip it around the cigarette in the corner, flip it down. It's a funny guy living with his around. mom. I look at a, a, a per, a, an adult living with his mom, yeah. reading the goings on of the world. <laughs> yeah. Just having opinions on it. He's yeah. like, I don't know, man. These politicians with these <laughs> tax was, bills, it's like, what are, you, what are we doing already with these tax? So, so fucking smart that it was so aggravating. I was a kid and I was aggravated. He was a waste, uh, a, a waste of talent. He read two, two books a week. Yeah. Two novels a week. Always. Always. Wow. Like, like that I'm is not a lot joking, of downtime. Like, yeah, he was a bartender. <laughs> yeah. He'd just sit there and read when he was bartending. And he worked at a bowling alley. I'm sure he was. Somebody was a weird guy goes, Dan, I escaped into my stories. And, uh, <laughs> Do you remember the movie The Fan with Robert De Niro? Yeah. My dad like had that book. I remember looking at that book when we shared a pull-out bed in Marin. Really? Yeah, it's like laying on my side looking at that book like The Fan and then like picking it up and being like, oh, yeah. And then it came out as a movie. And I was like, oh, fuck. That's crazy. I remember Dad read that book. And he was like, the guy dies. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> cuts off his tattoo. Oh. oh. Yeah, I just think oh. my dad, it, I think when you see a parent like that, that you're just like, you're not doing anything. Why aren't you doing it? It's like a dog just sitting there with a leash being pulled and it's not moving. He's never had that. My dad always worked like uh, blue collar job, yeah. always, but like just worked like that thing always yeah. like doing that my step pop came around young and like had jobs but eventually went to school and just got like you know yeah. legit like professional job my mom same thing always worked a lot and then went to school and got her medical job so like it's my mom uh, my mom worked my mom was the opposite i never mom. saw a dad just kind of like even christine's dad for like you know being a, a, a an alcoholic and shit like work, he was fun, very functional right like yeah, he, like, yeah, he wasn't yeah. like a missed work because he was hammered guy ever or nothing. no yeah. he had like a full time job with Edison and like super responsible and pass out at night from booze and wake up for work in the morning that's well, awesome he worked he worked it was great shift for an alcoholic he worked fucking uh three p.m. to midnight killer shift. smart yeah so my mom was the opposite of my dad worked eighty five hours a week nonstop go. Work, work, always push through it, that kind of shit. My dad Catch was a like, dick left and right. Dude, she's, no, she was efficient. She was like Bill Clinton. <laughs> she was like, I can get dick on Friday, Saturday, 
I have to go to Nick's to get some uh, some seeds and some planting to plant on Sunday. Oh, Monday, like, dick, dick, dick. And then she goes, Sunday night, maybe some late night, dick. I'll leave. Maybe some Wednesday. Num, num, num. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, a little nosh. Bing, bang, boom, man. They do. I know, she going to the Fleetwood Mac concert. Bing, bang, bang. There's dick, that. Dick, dick. Dick, dick. Uh, but my dad was just straight up like, well, let's get fucked up. Yeah. Like, let's get fucked up let's in a way that's it. not cool. Do you wish you had a chance in, in a weird way, like, before about to, to get like fucking ripped with your dad, just like have like, yeah. a, like a like a smoke a butt and just oh. tell stories. I'm just hear it all. You know what would be fun to go on a cruise with my dad. <laughs> yeah, Straight dude. Straight up. Just oh, you guys could have fuck. You could have fuck. You could have fucked the mother daughter team. Totally. My dad would have set it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? My dad would have been like, ah, oh, he would have because br- he would have been he could have bragged for me. Yeah. It's my like, boy right there. Like, yeah, you watch Showtime? And my dad's charming as shit. And then just get hammered playing cards with him. And then, you know, like a wink as he walks away with the mom. <laughs> me and my dad. Get out me, of here, pal. Me and, out of here, pal. me and my dad could have tag team some ass on this boat for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Let me and my dad. Soda boys oh, go. Just see. Let the old considered soda boys go. Hell yeah. Me and my dad just walking down the hallway with two bowling pins yeah. of women. Dude, how great would that be if we came across, we, uh, both in uh, matching Hawaiian suit shirts? <laughs> both both pairs in the middle. High five. High five, High five into the backwards yeah. low five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Are you going to die at sea? Dude. Oh. That's a good... If, if there's a burnt way to go out, death at death sea. Death at sea? If I die, if I die on the cruise, Before I wait, you no. just get rid of my body? <gasps> oh, dude. And make no, it let's, not, let's not get rid of your body. Let's just have you... If you're going to do it, dude, just go off the front, dude. Titanic style. Oh. King of the world it. The machine out. Hey, both of you pans... <laughs> Both you pansies need to step it up. This guy's going to live up to his nickname. We got to throw him in a fucking parasail and then just cut the rope. <laughs> we get a Bernie style. Yeah. Uh-huh. Just have a dead oh, body. If I die, the... we get him to burn as me. Yes. Let's just keep partying with me. <laughs> <laughs> I go, and then one of your friends gets mad because they get you week three. They go, dude, no one cleaned his pants out. He evacuated right after he died. No one cleaned them. <laughs> he is riddled with flies. Yes. We can't take him back to L.A. Not because of his family, but because of coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> they just gonna fucking rip parts of them apart. One of them walked down to sunset. They wanted to bite a piece of fucking bird off. To be honest, all those, all that booze. I thought he was gonna be pickled. Yeah. Turns out, no. <laughs> yeah, bird, birds <laughs> rotting be, like anybody else. Bird's gonna be like. Uh, bird, You'd be shocked. You'd be yeah. shocked. <laughs> bird's gonna be rum ham. We're like, if you bite him, you're gonna get hammered. <laughs> rum ham. Yeah, yeah from oh. always sunny. Oh. oh, I just gonna put Bert like every barbecue. Just tape a spatula to his hand and put him next to the barbecue. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm up on the roof. I'm on the roof operating. I'm like a minaret. I'm like, oh, God damn it. So does hey, anyone, burgers are up. You go, <laughs> Have you guys seen how fucking strong Soder's core is? They go, yeah, well, what you don't know is weekend operator of Burt Kreischer. <laughs> I think about my funeral way too much. Do you? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think about, I'm a hypochondriac, so I worry about the disease that's going to kill me slowly and painfully. So then I think about how I'm going to have to make the healthy video to play at my funeral, where I'm going to have to be like, hey guys, just to really trip them out, that's what I would want to do, is make a healthy, if I got like a terminal illness, you make the video where you find out when you have the illness, where you're like, hey, it's regular me. You probably watch me wither away. I want, you do, I want you to do like a My Life where you teach your unborn child a bunch of things about being a man. I go, hey. You ever see that sad movie? I go like, yeah, I go like, Are yeah, you trying Mike, to make us cry? Yeah, with Michael Keaton. But mine would be like this. Run cover two a lot in Madden. It works. <laughs> he goes, I mean, I goes, it's deep coverage. Yeah. It's also across the middle. Honestly, if you're playing anything older than Madden 16, I would say you can just stack your linebacker behind the DN. You have an open pathway to the quarterback. You're fine. Also, uh, you get it, kiddo. Yeah. Sorry about the debt I left you. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you Dude, That's the craziest part is that people die and their dads leave them in debt. Yeah. But you don't hear about that. How? Because yeah. oh, because they uh, who is it? There was a comic that just was telling me this that his dad passed away and he left him left him so much fucking debt. <laughs> That's so fucked. Why up. do you absorb their debt? I don't understand why. I don't know, but thank God Gary just went out silently off the grid up in Northern California when I was fourteen. Left you a twelve if pack I, of wine coolers. Yeah. <laughs> he left me a fucking pair of corduroy shorts, a half a pack of Marlboro Reds, and a Jimmy <laughs> Buffett tape. Wait, you lost your dad when he was when you were fourteen? Yeah, I was fourteen. He was forty eight. Oh yeah, booze like heavy. Ah, 
I don't want to like, hear that when we just bring in the boobs. Yeah, but rum. Don't worry. You're <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a Jimmy Buffett fan. Yeah. Now that I think about it, he went out the way a parrot head goes out. Yeah, he, were, he, he was had a, a real Jimmy Buffett fan. Yeah, oh, he had yeah. a parrot's death. A parrot head death. Nothing, you, maybe serious? nothing funnier than seeing uh, Soder get misty when we went to a Jimmy Buffett concert together. <laughs> yeah, son of a sailor. It'll we just went. Out. We just went to go. We only went to go watch Huey Lewis, really. But Soder kept saying, "I'm like, if Huey Lewis, we could split." And Soder's like, "Yeah, we can split after Huey Lewis." And be like, "I'll stick around for a couple Buffett songs." I, I didn't. Real, I didn't know at the time. I really yeah. didn't. I didn't yeah. know the the correlation yeah. of how much it was. Oh, heavy. I literally would have stayed the whole show if oh, I felt I, that. They're fans. I know. You did, I know you didn't want to stay either. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, I would. I was making a push. I was like. Dude, I got like another song or so. Me and Dan's like, I just want to. Uh, let's see what the next song is. And yeah. It wasn't a song, I guess, that it matters. So he's yeah. like, he's like, we can go. And then we get out to the, as we're walking to the car from the stadium. You hear like <laughs> the son of a. Yeah. And Dan just goes. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, man. Are you serious? I by mean, way, by the way, I'm, I'll tell you, yeah. I swear to all my children, yeah. I am a legit Jimmy Buffett Dude, fan. Dude, you would have gone. Come on. I mean, 100 fucking percent. You and Gary would have gotten along like peanut butter and jelly. Dude, play some Jimmy Buffett. I'll start oh, What do you want to do? You start doing He Went to Paris? Paris? Most, like, I'm telling you. By the way, I'm a Buffett fan, too, but mostly the hits. Like, you can put on some He Went to Paris. Can I tell you, I'm, I'm actually thinking about dumbing down my act. Uh, yeah. Juice in the middle of go. You love that, Lou? Uh, I like Hubba Bubba. I don't know if you're getting the right one. Mine, I remember, was green or blue. Yeah, green. Freshen up. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. You liked it. Love that gross shit. Yeah. Oh. Did you like the wax where you bite off and drink the juice? I did that. I like that, too. Really? Oh, I remember yeah. these. They sold them at my dad's liquor store. Oh, there's soda inside gum? Yeah. RC Cola of all sodas? Yeah, dude, it's Royal Crown. By the way, I've never seen uh, gum described as, and it says on the package, I quote, five big chunks. Yeah. Was, dude, they used to sell that at my dad's liquor store, and I loved the Cherry 7-Up ones. Really? Loved Was it carbonated? No, it was just like a gooey. Just cherry? Yeah. Ugh. But I was like eight, so I was like, yes. Liquid center bubble I would, gum. I would eat those... Uh, I just realized that my dad would give me candy, but he would just steal it from the liquor store. Yeah. Like, he'd be like, yeah, take that. And then I'd be like, he never put money back in the register. My mom called him out for that because I was bragging about it. I was like, yeah, when I go to work with dad, I get, like, candy and sodas. And she's like, oh, so he's stealing from the liquor store? And I was like, is that, is that what he's doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a kid. You're like, wait, what? Do you know what TSA has caused? Uh, just that thing, that one level, that one... Well, I was going to say that one shoe bomb guy, but one it really was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the shoe bomb guy though. It was probably the planes that were taken over and flown into towers. Oh yeah. That's probably the one that's it's probably a big de reason why, but the days are over of coming out of the jetway in your, remember that? Remember those Dude, emotional used to, reunion I, or friends? Dude, I used to have I, friends, friends would go with me. Like would go when I went to my dad's for a summer. Yeah. Like my, one of my best friends from go home with you to the gate would go with us to the airport with me and my mom or my grandma or whatever. And then they would leave. But yeah. they, they, but they'd get me right to until I got on the plane. Walked, walked on the plane. So how long has that been over? For? I used to fly by myself when I was a little kid. From the age of five to ten, I flew by myself. My mom wouldn't fly with me to San Francisco, so I would fly Denver to. But they'd sign you a person. Yeah, well, no, my mom would walk me to the, I mean, they still do that now. Oh, oh, oh she'd walk you right. I get what you're saying. Yeah, she'd be able to walk you right to the which plane. Which I'm sure parents can still do if you're flying. No. You get a, you no, to get an unaccompanied chaperone. minor uh, person to take them through security. I yep. had it set up for what? Isabella, and they flaked on it and didn't do it. And I, I mean, wait, what? So they can't? So you couldn't take Isabella to the gate? Of, no, nobody could. And then, yeah, that person didn't get her, so she was at the gate by herself. What is the hilarious. only? And I remember that we were. Were you there for that? We were all up back the stand, and she called me to tell me she was okay at the gate, and then. <laughs> uh, uh, Sherrod grabbed my phone and asked her to put on speakerphone. He just yelled the N word over and over again. <laughs> uh, she was a big hit on the flight. They, that's like one of the only like uh, sweet memories I have of my dad is when I used to fly. I'd like book it because they when you fly by yourself, you have a little button on. You have to stay on till everyone gets off, uh -huh. and then they walk you out or whatever. But the uh, flight attendant would get me off the plane, and then I'd just book it down that fucking thing, knowing my dad was uh, be like, oh, dude, sprinting, full-on 40-yard yeah. dash. It was great. That was, yeah. like, one of my favorite memories. That sucks that kids can't have that it's anymore. Over. There's a lot of kids who live with parents in different cities. Yeah, I remember getting off a plane, and yeah, and, like, my, when you, Yeah, when you see your dad, you're like, yeah. hey, what yeah. the fuck? 
It's, um, Fuck that bitch, huh? What's huh? going on? What are the dudes put, up to? Put a, put a pin in that. Cup. I was always coming. I was always showing up. Like, what are us dudes gonna get into? <laughs> Is Nana asleep? Can we hang out? Dude, I, being a kid and flying like that, I flew by myself. I, I think about it now. I flew by yo, myself dude, a bunch too. But uh, I don't want to forget this story. Oh, I, I don't know if you're moving on from flying. No, 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 I'm not. Because I was gonna say it, it, it's about being a kid flying. Yeah. Because uh, a, when I was in line for uh, TSA. Yeah. For security, it was great. There was a guy. It was a lot. Here's there was a lot of Orthodox, not even Hasidic so much, but a lot of Orthodox Jews. Okay. At the By the way, the Orthodox Jewish woman is coming up. I, I the wig always bothers me and stuff, but under them wigs, sometimes they get like cute young wives. These oh guys. yeah, they got some cuties. You sometimes just know you can see. Oh, I bet the smells are just ungodly though. Well, that's a throwback V. You're a muff guy. I mean, oh yeah, but I mean that's gonna be. That's, like that's a, I'm, not, I'm not religious muff. That's like wearing a fucking no. wool sweater and a sauna. I'm into stylized muff, dude. Not religious muff. Religious muff is hard. Muff for God is too big. Oh my Muff god! Muff for God holds smells and lint. It's it's Julius Irving. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Fucking, it's like young young Doctor J. It's unkempt. <laughs> well, no, he kept it more kempt. Yeah, it's it's just woolly. It's like feral almost. It's just I bet it's no good. But uh, no, I like a stylized bush for sure. So I know these uh, these Orthodox Jew broads are and definitely the- rocking. Crazy muff. Well, so also uh, sort of the dudes. Think about that. They just got all these like wooly fucking bushes. <laughs> oh man, just them fucking is like rubbing two pieces of Velcro together. <laughs> but I think it was yeah for sure. I think it was. Uh, but also just Easter weekend and Passover weekend. A lot of people traveling, families. Yeah. So there was a lot of parents and kids, man. And just this guy in front of me, this family, his wife, husband. The wife was dressed like nice-ish, but more for a flight. The dad, for whatever reason, was. Slacks, blazer. To the nines. Button down shirt. Not to the nines. Okay, local weather? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. But looked Got like it. he was getting ready. And he was like a chubby guy. And, yeah. uh, and Coming stuff. in from and, the east. Dude, one of their kids, one of their kids just went over to the table that you put your stuff before you put on the belt. Sure. And he was over there. And I just will see this kid over there and just starts like sucking on the side of the table. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, she goes, Jeffrey, stop doing that, please, Jeffrey. <laughs> And uh, and and he goes, what are you doing? And she goes, he's sucking on the thing. He goes, he's sucking on the thing. Like the, and that dad, you could tell that was the hundredth thing that's annoyed him about this kid at the yeah. airport so far. Yeah. He goes, he's sucking. What the hell are you sucking on that thing? It was yeah. all that all the t- through the teeth talk. Through the teeth talk, it was making best. me. It was so hard not to laugh. He goes, why the hell are you sucking on the thing? Yeah. Because the thing, what's wrong? You sucking? Oh, oh my God, God, Christ Almighty, he's sucking on the thing. Oh, do why would he do? Why does he do things like that? And the mom's like, I don't know. I told him not to do it. That's like how that. he goes. Oh, he's sucking. And then just having to go through, and then he. He buzzed off for like the random check after. It was yeah. just one of those, <laughs> that guy was just piling it up. That's how, uh, what was the Michael Douglas movie? That's Fall, how, falling down? Fall, that's how falling down happens. Yeah, hey, just everything keeps going wrong. Your he, kids just suck. Goes, oh my God, damn kids sucking on, t- dude, airport TSA table metal <sighs> is probably just riddled with, I mean, all kinds of things. Well, they've taken Coke. stuff out of bags. <laughs> they've thrown it on the ground. But also that guy... That's always a stress reliever when you're traveling is to see a guy like that who's just super fed up with his family. And you're kind of like, could be worse. I yeah. could have five other people with me right now. Oh, no doubt. And sometimes it is. And then sometimes it's cute. When I was flying back from Salt Lake City, this like dad and his son were almost doing like a show where you're like, hey, can you knock it off? It's too much. <laughs> Whereas like the kid's like, super fragile cat. You just kept saying that, which I can't even say. Super fragile. Super califragilistic expialidocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. So he just kept saying it, mm-hmm. you know, and the dad was just like making him laugh and they were just being cute. And I was like, all right, I want to be like, I got it. <laughs> well, we got it. <laughs> you guys adorable. are doing Can I tell you why? I've known anything moms and daughters shopping. I'm like, I get it. You yeah. guys go shopping cool. together. I'm glad you bring that up because cool. I told you outside that I had a, a kind of profound moment that affected me in talking to you on the phone yeah. the other day when I was in uh, – Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad had come to meet me uh, to go to the... He's going to come to the show on Friday himself and then Fuck Saturday it. with the family. So Yeah, uh, Gary. Brian, two nights of Gary. Two nights of Gary. And then so he uh, he was supposed to meet me at 7 o'clock at the club. Sure. At like 5.45, he's already giving me the heads up that he's there. Great. And so I get on the phone with you and you know, like, what are you doing? We're bullshit on the phone for a few. I'm like, yeah, I got to get over it. Get out of here and go meet... Uh, my dad, and I, I, I almost got glazed over. I heard you say it, but I got glazed over. But you were like, oh, "Well, I'll leave out what you said right now." But you said something kind of just in passing, and uh, then you acknowledged it. But I 
And then I said to you, like, yeah, I was like, well, you know, it's just my thing with my dad here is like, it's kind of funny that like a, a guy that I spent looking for headlights down the block we've talked about a lot. Yeah. Is now an hour and a half early to meet me for my comedy. <laughs> now you're making you know it mean? up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're doing your homework in the fucking in April. But what you said in between that. Yeah. Was uh, I go, yeah, I'm going to go meet my dad. And you went, that's so cool, man. Yeah. And you're like, and I, you know, we always like bust balls with our dads being like deadbeats. Yeah, they, we yeah, kids they, and they, were, they were when we were kids. And they were for sure. But it did make me say a thing that you lost that with your dad. Not to be too emotional here, hyper emotional, yeah. but you lost your dad young enough that you said your words were, yeah, it's cool. Just go meet your dad at a bar. Yeah. Like I've as always... an adult. And I'm like, I, I go, I shouldn't take that for granted. My dad's still here. Yeah. There's and he a... is my, you know, he's the guy who fucking shot a puddle in my mom's, you know, like <laughs> yeah. that's the guy. He's the guy. Dude, so. when you're, whatever man yaks on your mom and fucking <laughs> slam a jams on her yeah. and puts one in it. Yeah. You got to give the guy respect for taking it to the hole. Probably, you know, probably hit her in the fucking eyes and mouth a couple times and then, um, you know, decide to fucking glaze her inside. I'm sure there was a, you know, my mom, a wheezy cough, <laughs> a rollover and a lighting of a Marlboro Red, but I'm glad it happened. I'm certain of it. Probably some drippage coming out going through her seventies beef. Well, you know what I was saying is, uh, <laughs> and this is something that I've like, I've talked about with other people who have like, you know, dead parents or whatever. But when you have a shitty relationship with a dead parent mm-hmm. and then they die, yeah. the thing that sucks the most is you're like, it's the finale. You're like, ah, oh, fuck, man. It's the best I've explained this. This is such a meathead comparison, but this is what I've said to my therapist before. But it's like, it's the same feeling as when your favorite team loses a playoff game and just the time runs out and you're mm-hmm. like, so that's it? It's yeah. it. It's done? Fuck. Mm-hmm. And you're like, kind of like, I know that's like a kind of, I don't know, kind of a dumb analogy, but it really is no, like this not, feeling of this, like. But you have the same thing as me. Uh, here's the reality. If my dad, me and my dad have had more like, and not many if one perhaps yeah like real conversations about like you know life you know what the fuck dude yeah exactly or like real like life decisions or ideas sure i don't really have that with him but if he died when i was 12 how old were you when your dad died 14 14 even when i was 14 yeah i'd have been like damn it's such a bummer loss because i'm like he's the awesomest man dude i think it it took me till i was more of an adult to realize uh, what a shit he was. I turned it 12. 12 was when... Uh, so you had two years of kind of being bad with yo, him. Yo, man, I mean, I remember being... That's like, what I was going to say. I, I was going to say your dad probably passed away with you, you still being like, this guy rocks. Uh, there was still some... Uh, it was more like uh, it had just turned. It had just turned from being like... Because the story I was going to tell is <laughs> when I used to fly, when I'd fly back from San Francisco to Denver, I'd go to, I'd go to San Francisco two to three times a year for about three weeks apiece. Because mm-hmm. I, I was on a... We've talked about this before, but my elementary school is year round. Yeah. So you go nine weeks off, three weeks on, uh, nine weeks on, three weeks off, nine weeks on, six weeks off, nine weeks on, three weeks off. So you don't get a big summer, but you get a fucking six week winter vacation. I think I like that better. It was awesome. Yeah. It was the fucking best way to grow up. And so what I would do is I would go on those six week vacations in the winter for those weeks I'd spend in San Francisco and then I'd come home and then in the summer I'd spend four weeks in San Francisco. So I was there, you know, that was the most I saw my dad. Mm-hmm. Um, but, well, fuck, I forgot, uh, I was telling the story because we were talking about, uh, oh. When it turned. Yeah, when it turned, I was like, oh, the, the story about flying. I, when I would fly home to see my mom, dude, I would be a wreck. Like, I would just be crying, and I'd like, I felt so bad for my mom, because I'd get home and I'd be like, I fucking want to go back to San Francisco. San Francisco was the shit. Right, it was yeah, the you shit. didn't know. San Francisco in the 90s was one of the coolest cities in the world. And it was like, being around that, and also being, Aurora's a suburb. Yeah, but not just like one of the coolest cities, but there's also the thing, listen, going to my dad's, yeah. I was psyched to go to, I was, that was a place yeah. that weren't sending me, and for several reasons. One, you you don't hold your rest of the year round reputation whoever yeah. you are in your name like you have a chance to have an entirely different like dude it's point of view in my mind i'm like in ohio i'm probably maybe i'm a little cooler i got i, I can come to the game knowing how to be a little cooler i don't I know, felt, I was a kid so I, 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 yeah, I didn't but I, know I, what I, but I know what you mean like i felt cooler Go. My mom worked at, an, at Aetna. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. went to like an after school program at a fucking uh, athletic club when I was in Denver. And then I was. Oh, it's your routine. But it was my routine. My friends. I had my friends. I was on, you know, I played sports or whatever. But then with my dad, I was like the kid that was at the liquor store helping stock. Yeah. And I was just like. I you was getting frank- a glimpse of like, uh, like. Like star stars but, over nipples, tits in the magazines. Oh no, full on, full titties, dude. I mean, we, I saw a nude. It was great. There was a whole fucking rack of mags in the back. <laughs> and then I would go to the. My dad would let me go to the arcade. My dad would give me five bucks and be like, "You can go to the arcade." And yeah. you're like, "And dude, that's like me being like, 
nine years old and being like, I'm a little man. You know, like, well, here's the thing. So our dads, we didn't realize they wanted to be left alone. <laughs> so they were like, he goes, when you're here, fucking do whatever. Just dude, come home and don't be dead. Yeah, dude. It was, <laughs> and it was literally like, you want to go to the toy store, get a guy? And you're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing. Yeah, ever. I'm getting ready to make a smokes run. So if yeah. you want to get a guy, now's the time to get a guy. I'm still so pissed. And he's like, for fucking $3, for six bucks maybe. Like, oh, you yeah. know, he's got you like, you think he's a shit, and you'll leave him alone for hours. Hours. Leave if him he alone. spends twelve bucks, get you two guys, dude. You're going for the rest drank of the week. Him, he could have drank himself to death. He could have. <laughs> he could have von scotted it, and I wouldn't have known because I would have been fucking building a fort in the living room. But so, so, so when I'd fly back, I was always a wreck. Yeah. I was always a wreck. And the reason there was, there was a story I was thinking about when you're talking about flying. One of the biggest fucking assholes I'll ever remember in my life to the day I fucking die was this woman. On a flight from San Francisco to Denver, and I want to say she was in her late 20s, and I'm seven or eight, and I'm crying because I miss my dad, and I remember this bitch on the flight being like, do you miss your daddy? Like that, and I was like, I stopped crying. I was like, what? And I just remember the rest of the flight just being like, who the fuck is this lady? So just like the balls to imagine. Now, we fly weekly. So I'm just imagining being on a plane and seeing a fucking kid crying and being like, I would immediately be like, are you okay? I wouldn't go to mock. And I know what you're saying. I take things in wrong. So maybe she actually was being genuine. <laughs> I don't think that was the case. Cause I remember her being like, I remember people around me being like, all right, like he's a kid. Yeah. I remember people, you know what I mean? It's just funny how you remember that. Be easy lady. Yeah. But back to what you're saying about seeing Gary in Cleveland this weekend. Is it always is like a thought? I think when anybody dies in your life, you just have the thought of like. Well, I'm saying I. I it kinda, goes in the future, and you're kind of like, I would like to do this with them. Like I always think about my dad. It made me think that I should like uh, more be like, uh, at least acknowledge like the good thing that is. It's like I still, you know, I can bullshit with my dad. So here's a crazy thing. I always think about. That's it. I'm not getting along yeah. with my dad. I get along with my dad great. But just the bullshit with them. That's yeah. the whole. Th I think that's what you miss more than anything when someone dies is just being able to bullshit with them. Right. Because the thing I think is, dude, my dad knew McDaniel. My dad yeah, died yeah. in 1997, but he knew Mike McDaniel. He knew Mike McDaniel was my best friend. And you know how is, fucking yeah. crazy it would be to like he's the run game coordinator for the Niners. Yeah. It's like he fucking is sits in the O coordinator office. But like that's the kind of shit you don't miss holidays. That's Fuck funny. Ho What's funny? It's like my dad does that with. Uh, Kev, Kevin Hart. Yeah. Yeah. Because my dad met Kevin Hart many times. We were just like exactly. around, you know what I mean? But that's just so weird that it, you know, that's like the kind of thing we're like, ah, fuck, that would be kind of cool to do. It's no, just that and you're right, like, it is. And here's what I say before, too. My dad's one of my favorite people to talk about, uh, Eagles. You know, he's a huge Eagles fan. Exactly. So when he calls, we can talk Eagles. Now, we don't have, we have no deep life talks at all. And he also but, called your daughter the wrong name. I mean, this of is... Of course. No. This yeah, is, listen, he doesn't are, call... He's never called Isabella on one birthday ever. But I also He's miss, a deadbeat grandfather also. I'm just saying the point is, he's just like, you, can, you know, whatever. I know what he is. But but I think there's there, there's two sides to it. There's really... There's, 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 there's just two different sides of the same coin. I kind of... Sometimes I think about how shitty my Gary would be now. Yeah. Like, would he, he would definitely be hitting me up for money. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? I would have to fucking change my number because he'd be like, hey, pal, listen, Jeanette's sick again. And uh, he, goes, Neil, he, goes, he goes, you know, Neil's son got arrested. I go, fat tit Neil's son? Fucking goddamn local government says they're going to shut off my gas if I don't pay it. I got caught I got caught smoking and drinking out on Blue Lakes when it was closed. You're like, God damn it, Dad. Blue Lakes? Yeah, that's a real place in Lake County. Anyone in Lake County that's heard that's like, yeah. Oh, no, I knew when you said it, it was something real. That's the, that's the place of the infamous, I didn't let go of the, t uh, when we were out partying with those fucking white trash uh -huh. people, I didn't let go of the tire swing and I fucking dragged on a bus. <laughs> Every time I drive by that shit going to my grandma's, I'm like, you fucking Pick up your feet, Soda. You Pick swing? up your feet, and you could have swung out into the lake. Instead, you dragged it down the side. Just this long, awkward kid with no arm strength. Just like, <laughs> yeah, it's the fucking worst. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Dude, I, I mean, love, if you want to, you want to have a good life. If, if I wish to God there'd be a video in the world of me zip lining as a kid, yeah, as a fat kid who can't hold his body weight up, like just <laughs> screaming in the faces and my belly button hanging out, probably. Well, well it goes back to the fucking who. Was the stepmom uh, where the guys in the sh in the shot? Oh, fuck! It's a classic video where they're in the 
the um, the launch thing from a carnival, you know, where they tie mm-hmm. you in and they shoot you yeah. up, and he starts slipping, and he keeps saying her name. Fuck, it's one of my favorite internet videos. I can't I remember. remember. It's like Jeanette or something. He's like, Janet, Janet, and he's like falling. He's like, Janet. I don't. If you think about it, fucking uh, tell us because it's one of my favorite internet videos. I can't believe I'm thinking about it. Back to the Gary thing, though. I always love when I know there's going to be a Gary sighting because you get to tell me what kind of weird shit I wouldn't imagine my dad doing, you know, like showing up early. I would be a little like, fucking come on, Gary. I said seven. I don't yeah. want to have to go down there. I'm going to be there all night. Oh, he's real uh, big. And, you know, nothing uh, to his, he doesn't know, but it's just so hilarious when he's like, hey, we're all going to sit and have dinner at the table right in front of the window. <laughs> like that's like to the street right there. I'm so wearing a shirt that says, I'm Big J's dad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when yeah. We, we were there, I went oh, to yeah, Cleveland well like two years ago and we were meeting him downstairs at the hotel and he had a paper that Jay was in and he was telling the security guard about his son that was in the and paper. And the security guard was <laughs> it could not, not, into shit. It. not into it. <laughs> not into it. He goes, oh, okay. And he goes, and there he is right there. Oh, dude, that's my son right there. And he Trish. goes like, Great. Thank God Trish does not do it when I'm not around. Trish doesn't do it when I'm, when I'm, when I'm around. So, cause that is curdling. That is blood curdling. <laughs> so my dad came it's the hilarious. first night. Whenever my dad gets there, both nights, he's there before me. Yeah. But already when I get there, he's worked out so many deals for pictures for, on my behalf. Oh my God. Really? Like people taking pictures with you? Tells me how far everybody came from. Oh how many my times God. it is they've seen oh, me. Oh Jesus. Now here's what he doesn't. What I love. Oh, I don't think he dude. gets fully that they're like oh, they're God, ironically dude. talking to him. Oh no! One of them apparently goes. He goes. Yeah, they were giving me shit upstairs. The guy was like, "You don't even remember his fucking middle name." Oh god! <laughs> oh. And I was like, "No, no." I thought he asked me the thing. I thought he asked me if it was his middle name. You know what, what this, my middle name was? Because this is what I didn't think about about having a live Gary. Is you have a live Gary and consequence? You, there's consequences. What my like? What what I say? Oh, about it gets my worse. Dad? I didn't tell you the worst one yet. Oh, I know, and it's making my fucking dick snap shut. <laughs> my pee hole snap shut because I can just it's. It, we're talking, to, we talk to each other in this room and we're talking, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's awesome that people listen and they fuck it, but you don't realize that you're <laughs> talking. There's a lot of people listening. There's you, a lot. And, and you're, and there's you're, a lot of people. And My dad said he's some, gotten shit just being like, we have a unique last name. He said he's met just people on his job. You know, he travels for work. Yeah. So I meet him and hear his name. He says very often. That comes up and, and, and they say things to him. <laughs> and when he tells me what they say to him, you're like, ah. <laughs> he goes, that's cool. I had a Gary too. They'll say like, to my dad. <laughs> and he's like, oh, you had a dad? That's great. <laughs> like, oh, dude. You don't think about that. Cause I mean, like mine is, my family's so ravaged by alcoholism that I would, my, my nana, who doesn't even have DVR. Yeah. <laughs> she's just like, yeah, she, they wouldn't even know a, how to work a fucking she has a, serious She has a app. tube TV. She doesn't watch billions. I have the DVDs on her DVD player, and she's like, yeah, I haven't watched it. And you're like, all right, cool. But I'm saying, I, I wouldn't think of that. I was like, my dad would be at a bar, and someone would be like, Gary Soder? And like, oh, fuck, you're Gary? <laughs> like someone like Shane, you know, just like, oh, yeah, you're fucking Gary? You know? Gary Soder? Uh, yeah, my dad, Gary Sodies. <laughs> and my dad's like, I don't get it. You know, my dad would be like, What's up? What did he say? Your dad would be like, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. You want to have a drink? <laughs> Dude, my brother's laughing, though, really genuinely about the, uh, I forgot about that part. When my dad first called yeah, that day, and I put him, you know, I put the speaker to the thing, and I go, hey, dad, what's up? I go, you're on, I'm on the bonfire right now live, so you're on the radio. And remember, he just goes, yeah, all right. <laughs> Never been on the radio before. Cool. And then he just goes, Come on. So I'm just driving back from Florida. He starts yeah. having a conversation like it was just going to be me and him again. Yeah, so I'm driving back from Florida. Your stepmom's <laughs> mad again. Dude, my brother has a great laugh, and he was just laughing at that so hard. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. But what did he – you didn't say the worst one. So – the second night, you know, Diane was there. Diane. And Diane doesn't like it when you talk about my small penis. She doesn't like when you talk about my small penis. <laughs> my favorite lines. That's such an old school bonfire line, but I love that yeah. so much. Diane doesn't like it when you talk about my small penis. That was going to be a shirt. Yeah. Should have been a shirt. Probably. Still should. Let's see if our fucking lawyers win. It will be a shirt. Penis. Um, so someone goes, uh, 
Oh, so my dad is, he's like, you know, working like a crossing guard telling me where to go and who to take pictures with. And these people from <laughs> far away. And I'd be so these people got mad. These people got married three months ago and they, and they met or, you know, one of their first dates was at your play. And this one over here is this guy and this one. And he, he goes, said, anyways, I set it up for it's, it's 10 for a meet and greet. He calls, for he calls Sam, the guy who manages the club. Love Sam. One of the managers. Yeah, him and Sam Scott. And Scott. Yeah. He calls Sam, Sammy. <laughs> Uh, they take care of my dad always very well, which I do think is cool as hell that they and do that. And your dad, to be fair, your dad pays for everything. He never asked you for tickets. He brings a big group, but he they doesn't do, ask no, for any favors. They, they've, started, like he, they start, they've started comping him a bit more and stuff like that, because, like, but they do. They like him. And, yeah. by the way, my dad's a fucking charming guy. My dad yeah. had a half-hour conversation with the owner. He has a really nice owner. family with someone else. <laughs> he has a, yeah. yeah. But he's had a, he has a... He just went and nailed it on his second try. Yeah. He had a long, he had a long <laughs> really conversation with the owner yeah. of the club, you know, about whatever. And it was just, uh, you know, so yeah, he knows how to like work the oh the room like here's that. the thing about shitty dads charm here's the thing about shitty dads they're not completely shitty or else they wouldn't be dads no you got to be cool at least to fucking come in a lady yeah cool. you got to <laughs> charm one person cool enough to batch in some box uh, yeah. you know what I mean if you're fucking dumping your load in some lady and having a kid you're at least my dad was married to my mom for twelve years it wasn't By the like way, Trish that'd and be Gary, a great but... Father's Day shirt yeah. but thanks for dumping I'm cool mom. no I'm I cool mean, Gary... I'm cool enough to batch in a box <laughs> yeah. uh, and Gary married uh Trish when they were like or not Trish, uh, Terry when they were like eighteen yes that's crazy my mom got married when she was nineteen Wait, hang on to I'm, Rick. Thinking, I'm thinking merch right now that's a really great shirt it's just batching like, some box. No, how about just like I'm, I was cool enough to fuck your mom <laughs> yeah. happy Father's Day happy Father's Day. that's a hallmark card <laughs> I was cool enough to fuck your mom yeah. oh you don't think I'm cool anymore I was cool enough to fuck cool your mom. To that's fuck more of a bir- that's more of a birthday card for your kid. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. I was cool enough to fuck your mom. Uh, How you doing? That now I think I should now I think I should just say it on stage. Yeah. I just uh, pounded it here on the air. Um I don't think oh no, no, no. What go ahead. No, 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 the worst. Did you fuck my mom? No, 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 no. She goes, Yeah, I uh I'm from oh, cool the wor- oh, you know what the worst I didn't say what the worst thing yeah, was. The worst so thing. Diane uh, was there and as my dad's leading all this traffic, one of the people you could I mean you could see them giggling. Oh like snickering on their teeth. My no, no, no. Stepmother and father oblivious to this. You can see him snickering. They go, uh, "Get in the picture." So Diane's calling my dad over, like Gary, Gary, come here. They want you in the. Pi-. Oh, by the way, my dad in seven or eight pictures of me this week. They also they ask for Gary to be in, and I'm always just like, "You guys are being such cocks. You fucking dicks. You're being such dicks. You dicks. asking for it." So like, I, dicks, I just, you would hold cri- you would hold kryptonite to Superman. So That's who self- you are. So you selfies. would fucking hold kryptonite to Superman. Yeah. You go look, the Green Rock fucks him off, and you're like, "God damn it, this fucking hurts." So this is a great one. Yeah. They go, uh, they go, no, 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 we want you in the picture too. And Diane goes, me? No, oh, no. And they go, no, come on, you gotta go. And then she goes, she goes, we need the mean stepmother in there. Ooh. And she goes, she goes, mean stepmother. And I went, ah, yeah. <laughs> and go, Gary, get over here, Gary. Oh. And then my dad, so someone's got a picture with me, my dad, my stepmom, and I don't even know who it was. It's just one of those, you're like, you fucking you cocksucker. Oh, God oh please damn. post it if, it's, oh, if you're listening. God yeah. damn it. I had a thing. I just went for the first time in like five years and spent time at my dad and stepmom's house. Yeah. I like did a home trip. And I like love my dad and stepmother so much. Like they're so happy. Like yeah. my dad has this beautiful wife that cares about him. He doesn't drink or smoke anymore. Is that weird seeing your dad dried out? It's just amazing because if you had told like 20 years ago, we literally everybody thought my dad was going to drink himself to death in the desert. Like yeah. that was just a plan. Sorry, he doesn't and he was finish the job out. like my dad. <laughs> Whew. But that Sorry, was- he doesn't go to completion. Gary fucking runs through the line, dude. And it's it, what it, when Jay was talking about his dad. What I said is like what they the way that my dad and stepmom treated me when I was like sixteen years old with yeah. his dead mother was horrendous. Yeah, 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 they did everything wrong. I mean, it was horrible. Like yeah. she told me recently, she didn't want me around her kids because she thought I'd be a bad influence. <laughs> and this by is way, my mother's years old, cousin. Sixteen years old with a dead mother sounds like you're like you're carrying her around with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I just have this mother. dead mom on my she back. Goes, she's six years old with a dead mother. It's. It's a it's lot. Crazy. My, I'll tell you this. My she dad can married, squat. Dinner stinks. She can out squat any guy. <laughs> my dad married my aunt Debbie. 
So it's my mom's first cousin, and her three kids. I grew up with like Wait. they were my cousins. Uh, I'm my own grandpa. So I've like known her my whole life. They aren't related at all. I'm the only person in the family. That's yeah, related but that's to. what my mom did with Joe. But both their like both spouses died. So like my mom died, and like their dad died. Wait, and, so like, they just went fucking old. Well, settler they got law? together no, before my, the dad died. We all have when this. Guys, we went through this. My mom, my mom fucked Uncle Tommy. Yeah, yeah. But, she, but I didn't know that I, she was she was settled. But like Christine's family was literally what they used to do in the old west, where it was like. Step in. They said you my died, uncle said that's I'm going to raise your family. Yeah, my uncle was like, well, it's in the Bible. That's what my uncle said. Well, it's you in the Bible. Fucking, that's not and, what happened. And, but he got, he no, got with her. Fun. He no. got with her. Johnny Boy had an eye for Aunt Debbie. Died. They were just divorced. And my dad liked Debbie. My dad's also known Debbie since, I mean, 19... 19- 75? Good job, until Mr. Evans. So he's until always had a little crush on her, I think. Until Christine's mom died, they just did over the clothes stuff. I don't know. There's like a lot of was... heavy breathing like this. We can't. She can't even move. I wonder. <laughs> oh, you wonder if there was that's an affair suck too if you, that sucks. That I hope so. Because it sucks if you want to fuck and you're like, the reason you can't goes, I can't. It's just wrong. Now I have to go change my wife's pee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I gotta like, go oh, change a diaper and oh. give an enema to my wife. Dude, that's why I think my mom. <laughs> I go, hope my dad got pussy in that go, ten years. I'm gonna go empty your pee and pull poop out of her. Yeah. yeah. But I swear to God, the second she's in the dirt, <laughs> goes, then I'm gonna jerk off. Then I'm gonna come back. She and was, we're in, gonna, and we're gonna we're gonna rub butts again. Because you wanna hurry, you wanna breathe heavy. You wanna walk in a, walk in a tight hallway again. Yeah, my mom, my mom <sighs> fucked my mom fucked my dad into a, the grave quicker. By just banging his ex best friend. Oh yeah, totally. My She's like, in- guess who I didn't kick out of the house? Joe. Oh, and he's mean to your kid. <laughs> and he dad's was, like, oh. He's mean to your I kid and he is opening you. me up. He goes, He's blowing my back out. Your son's watching WCW Nitro downstairs, yes. hearing most of it. And by the way, it's still the only thing your dad would care about. He goes, How big are we talking? She goes, Busting my guts. She goes, Remember Nick? <laughs> Nick like, was Nick was six foot five and hung. <laughs> <laughs> She goes, I mean, after you, it's just been a bull stampede through this thing. When you, uh. I said, like, what am I going to be mad at them forever? For what? Am I going to be mad at, like, wh- how they acted when I was pushing forever? Like, oh. they have a beautiful, beautiful life together now. And I'm so happy. My dad deserves it. He deserves the happiness. Yeah, that's you know? good. It's also weird. They run swing parties. Oh, they just <laughs> fishbowl parties all the time. It's just like he paid for, he paid for a little work. Like, she's hot. You good know? for him. <laughs> Fucking A. They got a nice house. Good job, Mr. Evans. Yeah, good, looking, good looking woman for her age, for sure. Dude, yeah. that's what, uh, I, man, you I think about, I, she, she, she cares about like, her body and her style. Like, I mean, your yeah. mom, your I slipped pretty old Braju. Hey, your mom died, but like talking about your dad turning it around. That's what I talk. That's what I mean with the finality of that. Yeah. Like you, with, with my dad dying, you're like, ah, oh, man, it would have been cool to see Gary, you know, maybe shave the mustache off. Maybe fucking not drink all the time. Gare showed up with a rock and a fucking all gray goatee. Badass. He goes, Dad's got a goatee now. Never had a goatee. Exactly. That was never goatee. He was never seen. He was always beard or mustache. Black Lou, did your dad turn it around? Uh, you could kind of say that he turned it around. Like, you beat you beat it out of him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, knock him yeah. out. He <laughs> turned it around. Fought your father. <laughs> yeah, he, you're uh, the only one that got to actually fucking the sweet, sweet relief yeah. of punching he your did father. A one, he did a 180 on me with a two-piece. <laughs> Yeah, now he's in church every Sunday. He's a construction worker, works at Home Depot part time. So, do you guys like? Is your shit turned around at all? Like, uh, we we will get together and smoke maybe once every two months at the most. Okay. Yeah. And what? How long do those conversations are they easy? And t- at what point does the conversation get hard? Like to keep it going, where you're like, "All right, dude. Well, I'm just gonna get out of here." You know, uh, it doesn't get too hard because I try to get out of there within a short time period. Keep leaving one more. Know much about That's why it. I only do 50 minutes on the road, dude. Yeah. I ain't doing an hour. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going to have you burn out on me on stage. I'll do 50. Leave you one more. I do 45. I mean, yeah. I, I probably do I'm somewhere between 45 and 50. Yeah. Daddy, you're my enemy. Um, it's a pretty good theme. It's a great theme. Well, we never got into the lose. I mean, we... Oh, we got into uh, to White Lou a little bit. I mean, last we heard, I think we stopped, he was hiding in a closet while Stu almost fought his dad. Yeah. Do me! Not her! Me! And Lou was like, do them! Yeah. Go, Has anyone seen Lewis? It's just an open bathroom window. <laughs> I was gone in the night. Is he eating his and Stu's portion of cheesecake? <laughs> <laughs> Stu's, goes, Stu's in a fist fight. So, yeah, Stu's fighting his dad, and Lou's like, he, also, he, said, um, he said that he thinks you're a bitch. <laughs> I like the way he talks to mom. You should do something about it, Stu. You know what? Honest to God, I'll watch he was cake. hugging me the other day, and he whispered in my ear, he thinks Stu's a pussy. He told me... He wishes there was just one of us, not two of us. <laughs> Go get him. I'm going to hold your cake. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow. Ow. Uh, oh. Did you guys, did you and your brother, did all, both you and both your brothers hate your dad? Yeah, we all hated him. There wasn't one that was like trying to stand up for him at all? My little sister was his uh, his darling. But did he did he treat her well? Oh uh, yes, actually. Here's a not here's too a, well. He didn't treat her too well, did he? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if our show's ready for that. Yeah. You go, guys. Uh, we just got to do the live show from here right now. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. That was the lost tape. So it's just, it, when I say goodbye, it's just my hands on top of my head, walking around, going. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he goes, that's pretty much probably the thing that led to her mental health problems that made her kill her own child. I go, oh my God, oh, it's too dark. Oh, man. You guys want to talk about Fat Ted and Neil again? <laughs> <laughs> well, remember when I told you that my dad was racist growing up? Yeah. yeah. Well, that kind of changed when my sister brought home a black dude to Thanksgiving. Yeah, black dude just did a Wayne Gretzky fist bump. <laughs> oh, so he Wait, had to, he, he had really get... did a look who's coming to dinner? He was like, well, it looks like we're using plastic utensils this year. <laughs> yeah. I said dinner, not barbecue. <laughs> hey, goes, honey, we don't need a valet. The driveway's plenty yeah. big. Yeah. This is my boyfriend, Dad. Your boyfriend's you know, my valet. We yeah. were still in, uh, we, I was just out of high school. She must have been 16. And she said, Dad, I'm dating this black kid, and I know how you feel about things, but please be nice to him. If you love me, you'll be nice to him. And he goes, all right, honey, I love whoever you love. Uh, it'll be fine. I'll behave. So the kid comes over. It's a weird reaction to a guy who fought one of his other kids. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, calm, and collected after no, a guy. guy's very, very layered, your dad. Yeah. Multifaceted guy. Yeah, he's deep. So, <laughs> the, so the kid comes over. But my dad says he's going to behave himself. He sits down at the table. And the first thing my dad says, trying to make small talk, he goes, so what do used people do for Thanksgiving? Wow! Oh, really? Swear to God! Wow! Did that is. Answer? Let me. T- Did let the me- kid wrap his answer? Yeah, he goes. Well, oh, first oh, we take the oh, cold oh, bread oh, out oh, the oh, oven. Oh, oh, then oh, I go. Oh. oh, what's your sister's name? Jen. Oh. He, goes, he goes. Jen, hit me with a beat. She's like. Oh. He goes. Turkey go in the oven. Mama looking good. <laughs> it's like a nineties. Marinated round. in Sprite. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh. Wait, use peoples do. What do used people do? That is a black belt in racism when you think black people. It's a little Jersey, though, too. But that's him trying his best to make small talk. He's behaving. That's the best he can do. Yeah. (laughs) I hear your kind has larger penises. He goes, so, can you jump through the roof? Is this the first time you've met a father? I'm the male influence in the family. (laughs) Hi. He's the reason my kids aren't gay or criminals. Uh, So, how did he react to that? Oh, my sister's left screaming, crying. Dad, you fuck. like you ruined it. But the kid, the kid, to his credit, stayed there and ate and ate dinner with us. It was a oh, fucking free meal. Oh, <laughs> and he's gonna get a guilt HJ later. <coughs> oh, sweet man, pink. your dad really made me tense, but I was able to hold it back. But now I'm all backed up, baby put your, girl. Put your pink hand right on my black. Come dick. on now, get that pink hand. Look at that. Oh, look at the, look at that color contrast. Looks uh, like Michael Jackson's jerking off. Looks like a look like a job. Ne- Neapolitan. I can't even talk. <laughs> My dad thought he, he was thinking of Kwanzaa. He thought there was a Black Thanksgiving. Yeah, used people. What do you yeah. What do you do? He goes, you guys I thought, wear he goes, some sort of a ceremonious hat or something. He goes, I thought you guys were Black Friday. I literally thought that's what it was. I don't shop. I thought you were. I thought your Thanksgiving's tomorrow. I thought you guys went a day late. You know you people. Yeah. Uh, black Friday. It's because it's a day late. Lou's racist dad thinks Black Friday is uh, Black shit. Thanksgiving. Oh, I ain't going out. Oh, I guess good time to go to the park. It's Black. Thanksgiving, ain't nobody yeah, gonna be out. Yeah, he goes, yeah, that's why everyone doesn't want to shop. You know, it's Black Thanksgiving. <laughs> so yeah. your sister, how long did your sister date this guy after this? Uh, that lasted for a couple of years, and my dad did kind of get better. I did mean. he teach your dad how to dance, and then they all <laughs> learned not to be racist? He taught you how to be a little bit cooler. Yeah, that's how the movie always. Goes. Yeah, yeah. He goes, "I'm gonna teach you how to be cooler. You're gonna teach me about responsibilities." You know, hun, uh, Jackson just taught me one of the. <laughs> He goes, put on that ludicrous song? Oh, oh, shoulder, shoulder. Hip, Hon, have shoulder. you ever heard of the Cabbage Patch? Because Demarius just <laughs> really, I believe he used the term learned me outside. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's starting to call me Mr. W. I think that's a sign of affection. So would you say your dad he kind passed of, away not racist? I mean, a little less racist, or at least he hit it. <laughs> he uh, hit it better. At yeah. the, on, his, on his deathbed, he goes, I'm still racist. Oh. <laughs> That's how he dies. What do you do when you brought home a black guy, Lou? <laughs> yeah. 
uh, gave him the secret, the high five handshake. There was too many things he had to process there. He goes, wait, I, what? Yeah. I, no, no, no. Up is down. Uh, Black's the least of my problems now. No, no, no. <laughs> Please tell me, son, that you're the top. Are you? Oh, God, I got to buy you a donut. Power bottom, Dad, just what you feared. And I want a donut for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sit on a donut. So when you're, what did, how old were you when your dad died? Uh, it was 2007, so I was 30. Did you guys make amends at all? Like, were you... Yeah. yeah you guys were cool? Yeah. Towards the end. Because I never... Moment. Like, you, you know, my dad died when I was 14, so there, I didn't really have the balls to bring up the issues. I wasn't like, hey, this is it's where big, I was mad. Yeah. This is what I'm mad about. Now that's why I'm walking away like a fucking powder keg at 34. <laughs> that's why I'm straight TNT right now. But you got a, you got the chance to talk Dan's to him. Dan's Dino Mike. <laughs> Dino Mike. Can we play that over Dan's uh, plugs now? <laughs> yeah, Guess who's coming to town? Because I'm TNT. I'm Dino. Did Don't you, did tweet your father, at me. <laughs> did you have a chance? Did he say he was sorry? No, I mean, he didn't. No, he, he definitely didn't. He, he didn't said, say sorry at all. He, yeah, well, he said he knew he wasn't that great of a father. That's that's an acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's is an acknowledgement. Something. My dad's never done that. He My never once? Still. He's never... Do I finally, after talking to Lefkowitz that one time, uh, I went and when he came to town, I purposefully had Isabella at her grandmother's. Yeah. I didn't have him meet Isabella right out of the gate, so I was like, I got to talk. I haven't seen this guy in 10 years. Crazy ten years. Yeah, I was like, I got to talk and talk to him. What like age? What five was, times. What maybe. was the age from there to there? Like twenty three to thirty three? Because it was about ten. Yeah, maybe it wasn't ten years. But it was probably from about, without much exaggeration, like twenty to like fucking. What, what, what am I forty now? Yeah, I guess like twenty to almost thirty. Yeah, and you had had Isabella. Yeah, Isabella was without uh, talk. Was like it five was, was five. Five years old. Was he aware of? So it's ten years ago. Yeah. So he knew Isabella was. Oh, yeah, but still, probably today couldn't tell you her birthday or anything like that. And didn't no. reach out? No, no, no. That's amazing. It's just amazing that... I'm I, still, he'll, he'll still mess up her name from time to time. What's, how was he usually call her? Well, the war, the first time he met her, he called her Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth? The first time he met her, it's, he goes, you must be little Elizabeth. And Isabella looks at Carl like, what? Yeah. And you go, she, what did Isabella do? She was five, but she was, she was like, that's not my name, right? She looked at you, too. Like, you she looked at Carla. Right? I just looked at Carla. Like, oh. And I was just like, I was right next to my dad, like, Jesus, dude. Dude, come on. You just dude. whiffed your one shot. That's an interesting thing when, when the dad becomes a grandparent. How does, does he stay shitty dad or does he become insanely good grandparent? Because I'll tell you this, if my Gary was still alive and I had a kid and he became a great grandparent, I would be really happy about it and also want to fight him. Well, my, I got like, to watch oh, my you dad. have it in you. You have it in you to be a good grandparent. Yeah, I got to watch my dad be a great dad to those other kids. Too. That's what sucks. But that's fine. But like the... At the end of the day, I yeah, who knew he was going to be? But I, this is not an excuse for him because I make none. You know what I mean? He yeah. can be judged however he gets judged. I, I'm just saying I understand being that I've had days where I've just flat out on my way in L.A. next week, right? Yeah. I have to make sure because I've done L.A. trip like where I'm gone for the week where there's been a day where I haven't even like texted Isabella. And then I look at it and it's like 11 o'clock yeah. L.A. time. It's 2 in the morning. It's worthless now. Yeah. Or the next morning I wake up and go, holy shit, I didn't contact Isabella at all yesterday. Yeah. I, so there is, I get the out of sight, out of mind, but you're just like, at some point, don't you fight that? Harder? Yeah, that's that's really is my question for every deadbeat dad. It's kind of like, at what don't you wake up like with responsibilities? I, sometimes I wake up and I remember emails I didn't respond to, and I'm like, oh, oh, God, no, oh, God. But there's also that kind of, there's that extra thing of, if I don't speak to her, like I said, that weighs on me because of my dad so much more. Yeah, you know what I mean? absolutely. But I, I'm i just saying, like, I understand there is a reality to the thing of, like, you got to remember, like, sometimes I'm texting Isabella, like, like, hey, little girl, love you. Yeah. Or whatever. When she's been a piece of shit all day to her mom and has been in trouble for two days because I'm not really in the loop of that as much. So I don't know what the sentiment is over there because I don't live with her. And yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I, I realize I'm still... Not doing the ideal situation, but for a kid. But I'm doing the best I can in given situation. I mean, there's there's four of a five of us, four of us in this room right now that can agree with guys that, that we had dads that didn't even try. Yeah, I mean, Carla wouldn't have just been happy to get. I mean, like she's like you know she's great, but she was looking for different stuff that yeah. I was offering. Well, that brings me to Black Lou because Black Lou, your dad disappeared as well. But then you guys, you said you made peace with him, right? 
Yeah, eventually over time, I started to make peace with them. Oh, over time? I think I say over ribs. <laughs> <laughs> so wait. It was over a blunt the second time. <laughs> was over a blunt? Really? The second time, You yeah. smoked weed with your dad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I smoked weed, smoke weed with my dad because I don't... Uh, it's weird. It, it, you'd think it would be weird to do it, but I'm like, this is just like a dude. But... but right? But is Black that kind Lou, of the sentiments? Like, it's like, well, it's just a dude, really. Right. But Black Lou, you were... This was the second time hanging out with your dad? This was the second time uh, where I took major strides in being cool with him. Okay, so when, uh, when did he he took off when you were two? Yep. And then when did he come back in your life? Uh, never really, because I never let him. So After he would that, try. I was furious. Yeah. So I. So when did you become like? When did the anger set in? Because I remember my anger was like eleven. Was when I was like started to be like, man, fuck this guy. Because I mean, could I you throw a ball like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I could fucking wing it, dude. <laughs> you had a cannon. I could fucking wing that shit. Yeah. And then I just want to fight people. <laughs> I picked up some. Oh, <laughs> oh, you want to leave? I picked up sports pretty well. Even I was just a mom for a while. So I think real. I would have been. My grandfather helped me, and then just friend. You just kind of go when you play with friends. I think if I, if I think if my dad would have been in my life, I would have been a better athlete because I think I would have had the confidence of a dad being like, "No, nah, it's okay to fail." But Black Lou, you were saying when did you get angry? I basically got angry like early on in my life. So as a um, little kid, as a little kid, I was the I was the kid. I don't know if I said this on there last time, but I was on the, I was the kid on my steps, yeah, waiting for my dad to pull down the street because he was supposed to pick me up, yeah, and watching every fucking car uh, go by. And do you he remember just never the? Showed up. Do you remember the thing? I don't know how your street was set up, but me, the top of the street, you'd see it get bright because headlights were coming. Oh, you saw which house? You saw which house got hit? Every headlights, you were like, here it is. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> there he goes. Mine was looking at the front of the car for the light because I thought I knew my dad's lights. So, uh, like, if a car was driving straight up, I'd be like, is this it? And then you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> That's why my grandparent, but I luckily, he'd be picking me up usually from my grandparents because my mom would be working or whatever. And, uh, and when he didn't show up, like, my grandparents were so great at, like, let's do something fun, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, I'm talking about being a little kid, but right. my grandfather died when I was 10. But I remember, like, come in, we're doing a puzzle, and we're going to order pizza or whatever, you know. Like, yeah, yeah like and, the, and you're kind of like, it's weird when you have adult thoughts as a small child when that's going on. Because you you hear that, and you're like, I'm going to go inside and have to do a puzzle and eat pizza. But also in your head, you're like, all right, I know why you're doing this. I know you're doing this because my dad's being a piece of shit right now. Um, no, I never got that vibe. Really? But, you know, it's funny. Christine's met my grandmother before, too. Talk about just two really good people, man. They were like, uh, I mean, I'm sure they had their own. That's what's a weird thing about my dad. My dad, because my grandfather's like so revered. Yeah. And I'm sure and this my, is your dad's dad? No, my mom's dad. Okay. I, my grandmother was never a fan of my dad at all. I think my yeah. grandfather, my, my dad always talks well of my grandfather, but tries to give me, which is just unnecessary, like too much of his dude that maybe he's making up. Yeah. Or he's right about, but he just does that thing where it's really quick. I'm like, yeah, you know, like Pop Pop really is the one told me I throw a ball and mm-hmm. did those things with me that, that, you know, you were probably supposed to do. And he's like, oh, I know, everyone didn't like me in the family. He goes, you know, your grandfather wasn't perfect, you know. Like, I hate like, that like, shit. like him and your grandma almost got divorced one time. I, I think hate that he shit. was seeing, like, he started seeing somebody else. And I'm like, the fuck do I give a shit about that for? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what does that have to do with like him and my grandmother being awesome it's, grandparents? That's kind of that's kind of the, such a weird thing. That's kind of the opposite of what I was saying with my grandma, where she does that thing where she's like, your dad was such a good guy. And you're like, he wasn't. Stop fucking lying. Yeah, it's yeah. bullshit. But it's his mom. Yeah, that's also the it's thing. It's a big, big difference. My grandmother would never lie about it. Really? So yeah. your mom's mom was like, he's a piece of shit. Right. But my dad's mom would never would never lie about it. So there was a wait, point. So she, wait, you, so your dad's mom would acknowledge that he sucked. Yeah, because she knew he was on drugs and alcohol. And what drugs the was best he on? Person. I know I, all I know of is coke because I found it one day. Really? Uh, Where, how'd got, you find when it? When I got older, all I know is coke, mm-hmm. and all I know about that coke is it was pretty stepped on. <laughs> Didn't do <laughs> shit. I'll tell you this: I woke up the next day like nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> goes, I'm still fell asleep behind the wheel. He goes, I wouldn't be surprised if that shit was half fucking baking soda. <laughs> um, so you found his coke at how old? Uh, later on in life. I actually got kicked out of my house when I was in high school. Okay. And had to go. What you get kicked out for? Why? I like I, I mean, Black Lou's checkered past. I was I was basically not going to let anyone get in the way of my conquest of white girls in high school. Yeah. So if you told me I couldn't go out, I'm going out. If you told me I wasn't going to go to prom because I didn't get it straight A's, I'm still going to go to the prom. Yeah. So kind of kicked me out. And then I went to live with my dad in Newark, which is a culture change. Yeah. And, what, um, and where were you coming from? Middlesex, New Jersey. So you go Middlesex. Like tiny. Yeah, you go Middlesex to Newark. Yeah. All 98% white. Yeah. To, I mean. It's all black. Yeah, basically. Okay. And how did that, how was that transition? Um, all I'm picturing is his dad is a. Uh, 
Lawrence Fishburne. That's from all I was thinking with the fucking and meditation I, balls. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking. He goes, he goes, he goes, son. He goes, Black Lou. Let me tell you a couple things about life. <laughs> yeah. Don't let pussy own you. You owns that pussy. Now I'm gonna be over here with my sand weights. Ah, <laughs> sand weights. Want me to give you shape up in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. So when you went to live with him, how how old are you? Fifteen. Uh, I went to live with him um, towards the end of high school, so like 18, 17, 18. And what was it like? I mean, culture shock? That is a culture shock. Culture shock, and I, I also started working for him because he was a contractor. That's what I was saying before. And judging by your Throwback Thursday picture, you were in the Bloods, which yeah. is probably a big thing. Yeah. Early on, but... Repping that set. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I would work for him, and he would never pay me the whole thing. So when I'm cleaning the house one day, I find this bag of Coke. And I'm like, yo, you never paid me what I worked for you for. Yeah. But you're buying Coke? I'm like, all right, all right, let it go, let it go. He was getting married to his second wife. <laughs> and the night before, he kind of like got into an altercation with me, and I we fought. You fought, fought your dad? So if you look at all his wedding pictures, there's a, he has a black eye in all of his wedding no! pictures. No! fucked him up before. Black the Lou! Night before. This yeah. is the best part for the third segment. I you swear to you, I thought, I thought you were going to say, you never paid me for the work I did. Can I have this Coke? Yeah. <laughs> he went like this, he goes, and he goes, Dad, you didn't pay me for the work you did. He goes... I'll give you the biggest line. Let's do that. <laughs> you want to bust that out? I got a credit uh, card in my pocket. You guys having fun like this on the Apollo show, Mark Face? Uh, no, but I, me and Nick will fist fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys got that dad vibe. <laughs> Good to know you guys got that Black Lou dad vibe. How did it, how did a fight with your dad happen? Because I think everyone's fantasized about fighting their dad. It was and good. how you would take him out. I know Gary's good. got a weak liver, so it's all kidney shots. <laughs> Oh, me? One devastating lariat. Lariat! <laughs> Gary's getting up going... <laughs> I call it a Gariot. A Gar Gary! <laughs> Gariot! He tried to... He, it was one of those situations where you're an angry angry kid because you haven't had him your entire life. Yeah. And then he tries to sun you. Yeah. And then he kind of like... He kind of like mushed me. And after that, I just basically dropped what I was doing and just started swinging on him. And did he, what was his face when you started swinging on him? Daddy, Hurt. you're like, Daddy, Daddy, yeah. me, Daddy. Was he just like, what the, what the fuck? fuck is happening right now? Did he throw back? No. He tried to do the whole, like, bear hug thing. Yeah. I hit him with a two-piece before he got to me. Nice. And then his uh, wife got in the way. Did oh. it feel nice? It felt amazing. It did? Yeah. It felt fucking amazing. Like, when you landed that, and I'm guessing it's a one-two, so you led with a jab, came in with a strong right, maybe yes, a cross? I don't know. If you yes. put one on his black eye, that wasn't a jaw shot. This eye. So, yeah. white one. White Lou's never going to know that piece. Yeah. I'll tell you, when, when he was on his deathbed, Luis just went in there and gave him two in the face. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking about picking Gary up and power bombing him. Just let me, if you mind, just give me a moment with him. I, I want to say goodbye. Yeah. Hey, Pop, sorry about this. Yeah, yeah. I go, I go, yeah, no, guys, just warm the car up. I'll be right outside. He's got to say goodbye to my dad. You shut the door? Thanks. Hey, Gary. <laughs> yeah. His elbow to his throat. Pop, pop. Ow. Ground and pound, baby. All oh. hammer fist. Hammer fist. <laughs> There was this kind of like, what the fuck feeling. Like, he looked at you like, what the fuck? Basically. And then yeah. your stepmom broke it up. Mm -hmm. And then you guys, you went to the wedding the next day? I did go to the wedding the next day reluctantly. Free food. Um, Hell, I get it. <laughs> but, it always uh, goes back to free food. Yeah. yeah. Lose sister's girl, lose sister's yeah. boyfriend. So, at the wedding, it, did he bring it up? I mean, I'm interested in what happens no. when you fight your dad. It I just... mean, we didn't really talk at the wedding. Okay. Uh, so, it was just, I went to the wedding... Showed my face, and then that was it. Kind and then left. left. Left for like a week or so, and then moved back. Was he at your wedding? Yeah, he was there. Okay, so you guys, when did you start patching things up? Um, separately, he sat me down like later on in life, because I wouldn't listen to him before that. And my mom sat me down earlier in life, and kind of told me what had happened to him, and why he kind of took a turn for the worst in his life. Okay. Um, and basically, did he get long... clean, ultimately? No, he still drinks. Drinks, but no more drugs? He, still. Yeah? I, I would say still. All right. Yeah. But, um... One day, he had an apartment with his brother, and they were like maybe 23 or 24. Okay. Um, and his brother had a really bad depression issue, which oh. was my uncle. Yeah. So uh, my dad's like walking into the front door of the apartment, and they had a balcony. Yeah. Uh, it was called the Manor in Newark, New Jersey. Okay. Um, he opens the door, and he sees his brother standing on the railing of the balcony. Like Forrest Gump, Jenny Like style. Jenny on Forrest Gump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, what the fuck's going on? So he goes out there. Uh, to the balcony, or slides the door, Yeah. and uh, his uh, brother, my uncle, is saying, don't come out here, like, I don't want to talk, don't do anything, just leave me alone. Yeah. And my dad's like, what the fuck are you, like, what are you doing? Yeah. And all of a sudden, he sees my uncle, his brother, go to jump. Jesus. So, my dad runs and grabs him before he can, like, fully 
you know, I guess be on the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he caught him after he, he jumped. Him. He caught him. That's fucking crazy. And uh, my dad's like got his shirt and like one of his like arms. Yeah. And he's like t- saying to him like, "Don't do this. Like, don't. Yeah. Don't, you can if you can fix whatever it is. To, like, don't don't do this." And my uncle like looks up at him, and he said, "Let me fucking go." And he took his hand and like took my dad's thumb and like released oh, it off it of off. him and then released his other hand and just like fell back with his arms. How and, how high up were they? Um, I think they were on maybe the 32nd floor. Holy shit. So he literally watched his brother just fall all to his death down, all the way down. And then once I heard that story from my mother first, how old were you when your mom told you that? Ah, uh, it was during that time period when we weren't getting along. When you were a teenager. Yeah. And that's yeah. another reason why she wouldn't say anything bad about him. Because she was like, she knew that that fucked him up. Now, were right. your parents together when that happened to your dad? No. So, uh, uh, no, because it happened before they got together. So then he met her after that. So when your mom met your dad, he had already experienced that and was like getting fucked up. And, Basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, trauma can make you get fucked up. Isn't this the origin story for Cyborg and DC <laughs> movies? <laughs> uh, Wait a second. I know your uncle. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> they did it. <laughs> the Spider-Man story. Black Luke tries to sell it, and he goes, and then he flew away. And then I found out that I ha- he had vibranium. And his thing. <laughs> I go, wait a second. Hold on, Lou. I've heard this story before. <laughs> so your dad, when your dad told you, was it the same details as your mom? Obviously, it was more detailed because he was there. He didn't want to go into too much detail because as soon as he started telling me the story, first of all, I knew what he was talking about. And then he just, you saw his face change. You yeah. saw his body change. And as he's getting deeper into the story, you see like yeah, almost yeah. all coming back over his face. Yeah. And um, were they very close? From what I understand, they were. Okay. Yeah. I, they, they don't really talk about him much. Yeah. You know, that's all, I, that's really all I know about him. I never met him. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So. Has your dad come through for you in life at all? Like since? Since, yeah, there's been a few times where I've needed him to do something or, you yeah. know, we've got to, he, he does contracting. So if I've got to pay $400 to fix something in my apartment or yeah. put something from Ikea together that she wants to fucking buy, then he'll come over and he'll do it. Sure. You, you get a little mean? bit of coke, get it done quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He goes, hey, dad, you know, you get that table together, uh, you can do some yak off it. And then just oh, yeah. bang the rest This is a mirror top. This is Dude, great. God, I love love. I love great. love. I love so love much. and I love Ikea. I love oh, that what? you guys love Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, dude. Father, son, business. Sanford and Sons. We do it. I like your dad right. comes through for you and keeps telling you that you, that, uh, you owe him one. And then what you're going to find out, like at the end of Rocky Three, he's going to take you to a dark gym and have a rematch with you. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, you're going to ring the bell with me. Dang. Ding, ding. And then we get that picture. Yeah, the uh, painting. Me and Christine bought that painting, and then it was a bad... We found that it was a bad reproduction, and uh, we sent it back. It was a, bumming me out. Good for you. Good for you. Are, do you have any moments... Because Lou's dad's dead, and sometimes Jay talks about having moments with his dad, like when his dad came to a special taping, where there was like, I mean, I feel like you had father-son moments with Gary at that, right? No. I, okay. I, I, nothing, I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't yeah, feel that kind of feeling mind. towards him, but I, he's fine. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, so you don't ever have like a father-son moment where you're like, ah, you're my dad and I love you. I don't think he has that kind of like genuine pride in me. We don't have pride he in you. He has to, dude. He has to have no, no, that no, no, pride no. in you. Of co- Listen. Absolutely. But if I was driving a bus, he wouldn't. You know what I mean? He likes... He likes that you've made yourself into something. He likes that he can stand outside and go like, hey, I'm the old man. And that's fine. I, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't even begrudge that. It's fine. But I get that. My emotion doesn't get to... Look, at the same time, who knows? Like I said, uh, I, have to, I should go and, and we'll go to therapy ultimately. Crack that shit open, dude. Because I'm telling you, what's so weird about it is like, it is an odd thing that I'm worried about cracking it open because... Even if I dig in, I'm so vocal and able to discuss like what I think my issues like with my dad are, yeah, and everything. That I don't feel like I hold. I don't feel like it held me back like a ton in life. I so it's like I don't really have any like a. But I, I also it doesn't permeate think, everything I do. But it's well, a, sometimes therapy. But it probably can, does. But therapy a lot of the times can give you a perspective that you didn't understand. That right. You had. It's almost like, like that, I didn't understand that I could because of therapy. I didn't understand that I could hold my doubt my dad accountable yeah. and be mad at him like that. I, I could be okay with my anger because I wasn't ever allowed to be angry around my mom because my mom was so busy and tired all the time mm-hmm. that if I got angry, she'd be like, shut the fuck up. You know, she's like, she's aggressive like that, where she'd be sure. like, don't you fucking, what are you mad about? You have clothes on your back. You have fucking food in your belly. Yeah. What the fuck are you mad about? And I was like, ugh. So it almost like temper that. It would almost like push that down. And then through therapy, I'm like, oh no, I can be angry 
You know what I mean? If that makes any sense, it's like to become comfortable with your anger. Where you're like, yeah, well, I, it's stop, gonna co- stopping me from that. What I'm curious to find out um, is almost like, you know, the phys- have you ever heard someone that says like they've gone to, a, whether it be a chiropractor or a doctor or a, a sports like medicine person where you're having lower back problems, right? Yeah. You're like, yeah, I need something worked out. There's like something messed up in my lower back. It's nonstop lower back pain. And they start doing something to like the inside of your shoulder. Yeah. And then you're like, what is it? And you're like, no, like this runs to that, which runs to yeah. here. And it goes, the, and your actual back pain's because you have like a torn rotator cuff. That's well, exactly I mean, what happened to my mom. That's exactly what happened to my mom. My mom had a torn rotator cuff and she thought her back was out. And then, I mean, almost per- exactly wow, what you just said. Interesting, yeah. And my cousin Luke, uh, he got injured and he, I think at like work or something, that he went and uh, the the physical therapist was like, no, we have to work your lower back because it was something to do with his shoulder. So my mom went to the doctor and she's like, my back might be, and they're like, oh, you have a torn rotator cuff. Like, you need to fix that. No, Well, almost my point. So I'm like, I I don't know when you go. I thought it was her getting her back blown out. So it's almost a thing. It's like, well, I worry about my issues with uh, guilt and blah, blah, blah. And this and that. And then somehow it dials back to where it's like, well, your dad's never watched you like you know, dude. I was, shoot, your dad's never watched you shoot a basket before. You know what I mean? And, you're, and then you start going like, hey, I guess that wasn't difficult. You know, oh, dude, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't. My dad never watching me play sports means nothing. I, I would say it means nothing. Though. I didn't give a flying fuck that my dad never watched me play sports yeah, or whatever. I don't and care. I never thought, I never thought I cared about that. And yeah. I always kind of carried this thing of when he died of like. Man, I'm tough as hell. I fucking walk through that. I don't give a fuck. Like, that didn't touch me. And then you go to therapy and you're like, oh, my constant need of approval from people's because my dad never said good job or tried to be in my life. And you're like, oh. Hey, and Danny. Good job. Man, get away from me. <laughs> Not you, Jay. <laughs> Not, Not you. you. But Black Lou, do you have moments like that with your dad where you guys are like friendly and you're like, oh, this is my dad and I love him? Uh, yeah, and it was right around the time of the him explaining what happened to his brother. That you were kind of like, man, I forgive you. Yeah, not fully. Like, I don't forgive you for everything, because we did fight yeah. you know, later yeah. on in life. But um, I kind of understand good more, coke, and, we're, yeah, yeah, got, and we're cool. So we, you know, shared a blunt and a beer, and it was all good. So I'm saying, my dad says he's coming to a show and stuff. I'm, he's going to come when I'm in Ohio one night, and it's always like, you know, exactly. We'll smoke a joint, we'll bullshit for but, a little bit. I, I don't know. Lou, did you ever want to have a moment with your dad where it was kind of like good, like a good moment? Yeah, I think we did, but it wasn't. There's always it's always tainted with, uh, yeah, where the fuck were you when I needed you? Well, I mm-hmm. think I have that with Joe. I lucky out that I do have that with Joe. Yeah, you did. Joe's great. And Joe's, Joe's actually great. Joe and Christine, do you agree with this? Joe's like a relative for being like a, a masculine guy for the most part. Like he, he's a pretty emotional guy as far as he's very much love you. Dude, can I tell you something? And, and sorry to interrupt you, Christine, no, no, but no. I've just noticed when I've gone with Jay to his mom's house or I've been around your mom and you and Joe, yeah. you can tell that Joe and your mom are very fucking proud of you. And like, they like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but they, it, it's, 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 it's honestly, it's like heartwarming because Joe's like, yeah, right? Like, at your special taping, he's like, you staying for both? I was like, I'm staying for both. He's like, oh, that first one was so great. And you're like, you see that he like really yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. And then your dad's like, hey, so you do a radio show? I'm like, you're <laughs> such a Gary, but, you're such a motherfucking Gary. Right, but also, exactly the same thing. Joe's also the one when I said I was moving to New York to do comedy, or I was stopping college because I was going to try doing comedy for a while. Yeah. You know, it was like, that's no. Like, you know, they did kick me out of that for, you know, yeah. a very short amount of time. Of course. Yeah. But like, you know, uh, it was basically me begging my way back in, worked immediately. Yeah. The, the thing that I that. love about Joe, and I think this is such a testament just to the type of dude he is, because Joe was what, maybe like 25 when he started dating your mom? 20, no, he was 29. 29? No, 27, 27. Okay, so a 27 year old man who just got in a relationship with a new woman, and Jay used to stay at his grandparents all the time, and it was Joe that was like, no, Jay needs to be at the house with us. We're a family now. Yeah, it's he weird, should come right? home. That's great. It's great. And, Do you think, I mean, you really think a guy would be like. Dude. You know, when, when, oh, I absolutely would be like, when no, you like a, let him stay at grandma's. Let no, me get my dick sucked like, on the couch. Yeah, look, you almost understand us. the uh, approach of Dude. the guys your mom was with, where they're going like, can this fucking kid go somewhere Dude, so, I can fuck, so I can fuck you on a couch maybe or something? I, my, what, my stepfather was like, no, what, you're supposed to be here. Whatever Japanese man invented Nintendo, thank you. Because I stayed out of the hair out of so many dudes throwing dick at yeah. Trish, where she's like, go play Super Tech Mobile. I'm like, yay! 49ers <laughs> reminds me of dad! <laughs> and then you know, she's upstairs having fucking screwdrivers with some dude oh, with yeah. Buzz. <laughs> Guy wearing a pink tank top. Yeah, this is OP. Yeah, you, no, no, that's too much Gary style. Oh yeah. yeah no, yeah. my mom dated Denver dudes, no, so it was like, 
Yeah, no more Garys. Like a mountain Gary's. goats. Yeah. Ops just made her start driving. Yeah, it's just like, <laughs> ah, ah. But did you have? Did your mom remarry Black Lou? So you had a stepdad. Yeah. Yeah, and were you cool Good with one? your stepdad? Um, now. Oh boy! Bad because once also. my dad and I didn't get along, I just had a problem with authority. Fuck in yeah! General. So new dude coming into the house, I was a little it's angry so, about that. It's so funny, man, because it's like. Uh, I didn't have that. I had the opposite where I was like, with my mom's boyfriend, so I was like, hey, I'm cool. I'm cool. Don't leave. Don't leave. I, hey, I'll take your legal. You want me to take your last name? I've never really been tied to soda that bad. <laughs> like, but it was one of those things where I wasn't that way. Even though I was fucking mad, I I don't know. My mom would bring in boyfriends and I'd be like, I'm cool. I'm, just don't leave. Just can we have a deal that you don't leave? Because I would watch my mom like... Get sad each time. Yeah. I'd watch my yeah. I'd watch dudes break my mom's heart, and I'm like, hey, it's not me though, right? And that's a weird thing for a parent to keep telling you it's not your fault, and then people keep leaving, and you're like, I really feel like it's my fault. Is this my fault? I feel like this Look, is my fault. Dan, was he a fan? No. But... <laughs> yeah. Trish is lighting a cigarette. She goes, well, let's just hope the next one likes your voices, huh? <laughs> let's uh... <laughs> it's ashes in the sink. <laughs> let's let's wrap this bad boy up, everybody. Thanks for being so open and honest, yeah, everyone. I that mean, was great. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to it because I mean, we went deep on. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Do you ever have anything on TV or a show like really hit you about your dad? Like that Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode? Oh, dude. I watched that a year ago and I was fucking crying. Are you, dude, are, Warrior. If I put the movie Warrior on, yeah. Good night. Just good night. I will fucking Drunk dad. Win. Yeah, the only yeah the one I Goodwill hunting. About, it's not your fault. I've talked about it a lot on this one. I think I use the example always oh, that riding in cars with boys, and that was the the dad who's the shittier person in the situation, though. But the kid thinks he's the best, and the dad come he mom catches him doing drugs again and says like you got to go, or it's my fault that you fuck our lives up if I don't tell you to leave. So the guy goes in there like sad to say goodbye to his kid. And his kid wants to go with him, and he grabs his toothbrush. He's like, no, I'm going with you, in his pajamas, and runs outside, <sighs> chasing his dad's motorcycle. And then the mom's like, he's gone, like, he had to go. He loves you, but it'll, it'll come back, whatever. But then the kid just turns around and goes, this is what bothers me more. The kid's like, I hate you. You made him leave. And, and I'm like, oh, I bet I made my mom feel like shit. Oh, Those absolutely, ones absolutely. This wouldn't happen at dad's awesome house oh. with his hotter, younger wife. Oh, my God, <laughs> Mom. Why do, why do you wear underwear and not corduroy shorts yeah. free-balling? Oh, yeah, the, the Fresh Prince. Oh, I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. Oh, Uncle Phil. I'm sorry. I, you know, if there was... Something that I hey, you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm -hmm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a damn card. To hell with him! I ain't even in it, I don't need him now. <laughs> Will. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm gonna get through college without him. I'm gonna get a great job without him. I'm gonna marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm gonna be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. Hey! 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 <laughs> that was a legit spit take. Hey, buddy, what's your name? Gabe. Hey, Gabe. This one's for Dan. Sorry about this, but you're amongst friends. Yeah. Pretend I'm Gary. What's the one thing you need to say to get some Jesus. emotional? Jesus. Holy shit, dude. What you I wish I would have thought ahead to build this up to everyone keep coming up and goes, how you doing, are, bud? What are you my question My question's for Dan. How you doing, bud? You need to talk like to anybody? A, this is like one of those... Any 60, new girls you like you want to talk like about? This is like one of those 60-minute profiles where you know they're going to cry at some point. What, are you going to walk me by the house that we lived in in Connecticut? The no. fuck is happening? You heard him. He's Gary. What I, would I, you I, say? I, I, God damn. Dude, I'm going to go to therapy on Tuesday. I'm like, I don't need this. Let's just hang out. I, I, fucking, feel, I, I feel like the next guy to ask a question is going to be actually Gary. Yeah. He's like, it's me, son. He goes, I had to fake the death. There was juice in the insurance game. He goes, he takes off a hat. He goes, I guess my question is, you want to come live with me? <laughs> uh, yes. Or even better, he just goes, I think my question for Dan is, how about that catch? Uh, uh, 
check under your seats. You all have your dad. Ah! Uh, what's the one thing I would have? Need to when say, do I get to say to him? Is he what dead? Do you, what do you need to say to get some emotional closure? What's the one thing you wish you could say? For emotional closure. No, this is getting too specific. <laughs> You're triggering specific. No, the one thing you wish he was here for that you never talk about. Uh, the one thing I wish I would have said to him. God damn, I love you, Lewinsky. I guess I would say, through song, put the bottle down. Down. You are loved. <laughs> you have loved. I wrote this song seven years ago and anticipating this moment. <laughs> you are loved. Don't drink anymore. Mom still loves you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for real, for real, yeah, I would have told him to stop drinking. That's the one day. I never said it. Don't drink. If you're an alcoholic, don't drink. Come here. Wow. Oh, it's, it's not your fault, Dan. Yeah. It was Dude, never your I fault. Know, I didn't know our fans were going to cosplay as my dad. I was like, ah, ah, corduroy shorts? Who am I? Do you know there's levels of dead dad? I didn't know that. Like degrees of a black belt. <laughs> like, like when my dad was alive, he wasn't around. So I was always jealous of kids whose dads were around. Then my dad died. Then I got jealous of kids with better dead dads. <laughs> Dude, I've lived in New York the last 13 years. I have multiple friends whose dads died saving people in 9-11. Top shelf dead dad. <laughs> That is premium American hero, dead dad. My dad died drinking next to a lake. He relaxed to death. Bottom shelf, dead dad. Dude, my friend's dad's probably said something heroic, you know? They're like, we need to save those people. My dad's last words were like, I like mine with ladies at the end. Because of the good of the good of the I'll tell you the true story about how I saw my dad's dick. And it was little, I'm not lying about that. But I saw it, here's how little it was. The situation when I saw my dad's dick was so chaotic. I shouldn't even notice that his dick was out. That's how little it was, it drew my attention. I was a little kid, I was at his house for the weekend and I'm up at like two in the morning, probably eating snacks, watching TV and somebody started trying to violently break into the house, like kicking in the front door, violently. And I was a little nervous fat kid, and I go running for his door like, Daddy, help! Dad, help! There's something terrible happening! And to his credit, he wanted to answer my cries. He opens the door, butt naked. And he just goes, what is it? And even in all my fear, I was like, Dad, so much... Oh, what? No way, dude. Come on. Really? Chip off the old block, asshole. And I was like, you know what, Dad? Go find a hiding spot. I'm like, never mind. I'm gonna call Joe and get some big dick advice on how to handle this. It seems like a big dick job. Kissing my dad out there to fight that guy in the nude with that little dick. I love my dad. What if that guy kills my dad? That's our family's legacy, front page of the paper. Local little dick man dies in tragic home invasion. And there's his fat son covering his dad's dick with one hand, crying and yelling at everyone. Stop laughing at him! Stop laughing! He's my daddy! 